I'm going to call the meeting to order. It's six o'clock on the nose. Um, and the first order of business is approve the minutes of April 17 and May 8th. April 17. I feel like we already did that. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Okay. I'll go ahead and second. Did you say second? Yes. Okay. Um, any discussion? Um, are you doing it separately or together? Uh, both uh, for April 17th and April 17th? May 8th. Can I list it in the minutes as two separate motions? We don't usually combine them. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Because okay. if ever someone like abstained from one or whatever, right, sure. they're two separate pieces of work. Okay. Uh, so there's been a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And now sign board orders. Jamie has gotten started and she's going to pass those along. Um, review liquor license requests for an event to be held at Memorial Hall in late June. So, we found out that um, what this is, is that the, the, um, the permits come to the town and um, the town uh, approves or denies the, um, the liquor license request and then Tegan will file it to a portal. I, I go on the portal and I say, yes, this has been approved. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. okay. <laughs> I would add, we, we could if we wanted to add conditions and that uh, they would be incorporated into the state permit. That's it. Every town does it a little differently. Some select boards want to make sure that the location is safe and that if it's a big enough event, the police know about it or the fire trucks know. Like, Different towns have different parameters for what a catering license requires. In the past, I gather the town clerk has just signed these off in Calais, and I don't even know if they got to you all, but I wanted to make sure, I wanted us to have a system that we'd all sort of agreed on, and you didn't find out about a year from now, oh, I've just been signing them off, and didn't tell anyone. So that was kind of the point of that. Uh, so have, have people reviewed this uh, license request? This is for Memorial Hall. It's a wedding on um, June, isn't it in June? I think it's 20. June 24th. Mm -hmm. um, at 21.30, which is, what is that, 9.30? 9.30 at night? It, it, that's what it is. It looks like it. the permit goes from zero hours. <clears throat> What's that, noon? One noon or, one? or right till 11.30 p.m. So it's basically a full time, full day. Does anyone know, did, was this kind of par for the course in the past when Memorial Hall was used for events, that there was liquor served and so on and so forth? Yeah. Okay. I, so. um, I move to approve the permit. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, further discussion? I have a, a sort of a general question, maybe for Tegan. Yes. Um, I know other organizations like the community center sometimes have rentals where there's a caterer coming and they have a liquor license. I've never seen them do a permit application for a specific event if they already have a license. That's because it went to the town Because it just always happens. It goes to the yeah. town clerk. Okay. And, and in the years I've been working in the town clerk's office, the town clerk would have to select one and prove it. So anytime there's a anytime specific there's event an by a license. An outside caterer comes to a location that doesn't already have a liquor license, one of these goes okay. through, but usually they just get checked off. Great. It's like an event permit. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. this it's an established caterer. They do this all the time. They actually called me up. They're like, it's taken a long time, and we do these all the time. Is everything okay? And I was like, everything is fine. It's on our end, not your end. I'll get back to you soon. Good. Actually, can I offer an amendment to my motion? I'd like to amend it to say that in the future, the town clerk may sign off on these without select board review. You, 
that can be open for discussion, but we probably should figure it out. I guess I would say with the caveat that if there's a really large event that we you raises flags for you, feel free to bring it to our attention. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Cool. Okay, so we have an amended motion. Yep. Do you want to define really large event, like more right. than you know, 100 or 150 people, or? Well, I guess I I also I guess it'd, it'd be helpful to know a little bit more about like where the liability stands or what the town's liability is. Um, did, did you have I a, may have more experience with all of this than most of us. Um, I think probably the liability would fall on the Memorial North Callis Memorial Hall yeah. Association. Mm -hmm. Um, they, I'm sure, have liability insurance and, and it's all covered through there. As, that as does the they, caterer. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and also the caterer. Mm -hmm. it, and I assume that applies to, like, one-day event licenses as opposed to, like, the store's yeah. annual permit licenses, just to clarify that. Yeah. So, um, okay, um, are we ready to vote? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, aye. All right, that's that one. Um, that is approved. Uh, fire alarms. Our fire alarm systems at the town garage and town hall are operated by Seacoast Security. And um, if it happens in the middle of the night, and they're able to discern this is in the main office, will not call the town contact person until 9 a.m. John Stafford has agreed to be the town contact person for the town garage. We need to assign a town contact person for the town hall. Um, so these are alarms that might go off in the middle of the night and so forth. Is it common? Oh, only if it, there's a fire. <laughs> She's saying oh. yes. No, I'm, I'm just taking my, my nodding to yes, Tom's Alarm to go off in the middle of the night. There's <laughs> a mouse. Yeah, they might go off, that's right, for, for because the phone, well, these are not burglar alarms, so they're not motion sensitive. They, these are just fire alarms, is my understanding, in this building here. Um, they might go off if the phone lines go out, but they can tell that in the main office. And if that happens, they won't call till 9 in the morning. If it's a real fire, they will, first they will call the fire department, and then they will call the town contact. Does that answer your question? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I would like to say that Toby Talbot has agreed to be the contact person for this if we would so appoint him. Okay. Great. Nice. Okay, I'll make a motion to appoint Toby Talbot to be the, our fire alarm security person. The town hall. Town hall fire alarm, yeah. Okay. I'll sure. second that. All right, further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Toby Talbot is the town contact person for the town hall. Um, okay, public comment. Up to 15 minutes. Time will be divided so that everyone has equal time to speak. Is there anybody here for public comment? No? Okay. All right, we'll move on to the Weiss curb cut application. And the possible action is to approve or deny the permit. We have the application in our folder and uh, let's see, um, and I think you're here to help us. Yeah, we, us. Uh, we met Jeremy on site and he had it <coughs> faked out and uh, there was nothing to start it and we looked at it and we found site distance was acceptable. Um, there's no drainage ditch to swale in his front yard and we did say if it ever would come down to it, he'd probably have to put a curb cut in on a pipe in it. Oh, okay. If we read all that, it's pretty cut and dry. So we would, we would say approve it. Okay. Okay. Um, anybody have any questions? John, do you have a copy of it? Uh, is this a permanent curb cut? The curb cut to, a, to uh, access the barn. Yes, yeah, to access to existing uh, barn. So yeah, it's just intended to be permit. So yeah, yeah. There was never one there originally. Gotcha. Okay. Something to sign. 
something to sign? Yeah. Okay, we can't bring it out. Oh, sorry. Can you ask oh, so you to do <laughs> So let's see. Um, uh, I don't know. I guess it's pretty straightforward. No questions from anyone? Okay. Is there a motion to approve uh, the Weiss um, curb cut permit? Uh, so moved. Second. Second. All right. Any further discussion? All in favor? Okay. Aye. Aye. Okay. And then that is approved. And um, the next one is the OR, I'm going to sign it in a minute, but the OR application for work in the town right of way. Um, that one we have problems with. Um, we went on site to see it, and there's been a lot of work completed before the permit was issued. Um, there's a lot of damage done as far as uh, loose dirt thrown around. There's a couple of culverts that have been um, dug up. Uh, some have been replaced with smaller pipes. Uh, the drainage ditch was put in, just, they just dug and threw the spoil to the sides. Uh, nothing's, no vegetation or no runoff control or nothing like that was applicated. So we don't know where to start with this one because it's already, it was done before the permit was given to us. It's a mess. It's our, Leonard Road is a class four road, it's our road. It's been altered, um, it's not acceptable. So we were gonna deny that. Okay. And then, and then what happens? <laughs> um, I believe that we, and Rose helped me out here, I believe we have the authority to fix it and charge it. Have you run into this before? Um, only, only in the very beginning of somebody doing it, and then they, they were like, oh, sorry, we didn't know we needed a permit, and then they, you know, came right away, but this sounds like it's more um, into the project or whatever more work was done, um, but certainly the select board has the authority to deny a permit, um, you know, it's not in compliance and so on and so forth, whatever conditions and whatever kind of remediation you could think of that would need to be done to put it back in order mm -hmm. before they actually get a permit. <coughs> um, I think we have to consult with the town attorney. Yeah. Okay. Right. It seems like giving an opportunity for it to be put back in acceptable. So I just read through, read through, uh, the town has a class, uh, class four highway policy that's you know separate from um, the rest of the town regs and, and standards that are in the, in the regulations and <clears throat> the town has uh, has the authority and the uh, property owners on the class four have the obligation to contact the town and get a permit prior to doing the work um, but the uh, Doing the doing the work and the cost of doing the work is the sole burden of uh, of the property owners. Um, uh, though the work has to be done to the satisfaction of the road crew, road commissioner. Um, so I guess I would maybe propose John if the road crew can come together since work has already been performed. And there's a pretty good sense of what was there prior to. Um, if if the road crew can determine what the scope of work would be to deem it acceptably put back together, um, and present that to the applicant to reapply with the full scope of work that would need to be done, and provide them the opportunity to perform the work to your satisfaction uh, and, uh, and reapply for the permit like that um, before committing uh, road crew on it. I imagine already has plenty of projects that, that they'll yeah. need to do aside from this, you know, and, and the caveat being, you know, whether or not uh, that taking that approach is going to affect any, any other infrastructure or property owners in the interim. So right now, are there are there no. any other parties who would be affected by the current state or 
future, access, future work. The access on Hunter Road right now is hampered. Uh, it, it's, it's been shut off for a while up, up further. But, but at the moment, are there any other property owners that would use that road for access that are... No. Um, well, that's at least good. Sorry. I have Larry Orr on the applicant. Yeah. <clears throat> I've been, uh, I've owned that land for 30 years. I've been accessing that property for 30 years. I uh, submitted the, my building permit this past January and uh, I've been accessing my, uh, my build site um, I have, uh, I would, I don't know if I would say I altered, uh, well, I guess I made the road so I could access where my curb cut is, was approved for years ago. Um, there was a, a culvert way back in the day that I, I took out, I don't know, a few years ago and I put a water pipe in there. Um, now that I've, uh, after 30 years, I want to build my dream home that I've had for 30 years there. Um, I'm asking the town to allow me to fix 200, and it's roughly 270 feet of that road, um, just so I can access my curb cut. Um, I've, uh, been able to um, work along with the Snowmobile Club over the years, accessing my property through that. There's a lot of uh, drainage that comes off to the uh, from the south of me. Uh, I guess it's Brian Emmons' property. Um, it's back basically spring. It just peels out and goes into the road. Um, yes, I've uh, I've made the water course go a little bit further. Um, and I would like to, you know, get the job done and right. Um, and uh, I didn't believe that I was overstepping my bounds and being able to access my property. Other, I do know that went back 30 years ago, I got a letter from the select board saying I couldn't do anything with class four road, which in my application I had, uh, wrote down that that's what I was doing. Um, I've never had an issue with anybody uh, with the road all this time. Um, I'm basically the only person that uses it. Um, so um, I guess if I've overstepped my bounds, then uh, my apologies. I don't know how, what kind of restitutions I could make. Um, I believe that it's been a benefit to the people that do use that road from what I've done. Um, and then I basically just pushed off, you know, uh, the silt that's accumulated on the road that uh, uh, I can't access my property through that. I mean, I, uh, so I don't know what else I, I might say other than uh, I'm kind of amazed about this uh, result, uh, but I'm willing to, to do whatever, the, or not do whatever the town does, I just, I just, I'm just kind of, I'm not sure. Two, uh, I plan on uh, getting, a, a, I'm trying to get a cement truck up there to put a foundation in. Um, there's no other way that I can have that happen without doing something with that road. And like I say, I'm only asking to do 270 feet of that road. And it'll be, I'm not looking to propose a highway or have anybody maintain it for me or all that. I just need to get access for a concrete truck to go in here and, and put my foundation. Uh, so, um, that's uh... um okay so we deny the permit 
then and consult with our attorney about how to word the what needs to happen to make it right. I, I mean, I, I honestly, this is I'm not dealt with this. That's before. one option, but Jordan has suggested a different route. Yeah, I'd, so the length that Jen has written the uh, class four highway policy. Um, before commencing work, the landowner shall agree to sign and deliver uh, to the town clerk a letter in which uh, they promise to assure that all of the requirements uh, for signage, work safety, public safety re uh, required by law or reasonable prudence uh, will be adhered to uh, in connection with the work and that the road work will uh, be done in accordance with specifications established by the select board in conjunction with the road commissioner uh, and agree to indemnify the town uh, and its agents for any and all damages, loss, or claim associated with it. So you know, I think there's there's kind of two, two issues. One being the class four roads kind of fall into the spe special category where those who have property on class four roads are are owning the liability of, of cost of development and, and maintenance of those roads, but uh, it is a established town right of way that um, should be constructed to a, a reasonable standard set by the town and, and, and the road crew should the road eventually turn into a town asset. And so, you know, I, I sympathize with, <laughs> with the position uh, as, as a property owner who's trying to get development work done, but, um, and, and wanting to not make it an over, overly burdensome position, but I also want to be careful about setting a precedent for approving an application without, uh, without having a conversation about what the benchmark for, you know, reasonable construction standards are. And, you know, I don't think we need engineers involved in that sort of thing, but we do need to document um, what stretch of road is going to uh, see, see work um, and, and what materials, what size culverts and where. Um, uh, the first paragraph says that in, in the application that there should be uh, some some drawings provided um, so that it, at least it's documented yeah. there. So, yeah, drawings. There was. Okay. Like, just that it was kind of after the fact. Yeah. John, if we were going to issue the permit tonight, what conditions am I? Can you not hear me? I'm sorry. No, that's on constant. What conditions would you, with the road crew, have um, asked for? We asked for the proper drainage for the uh, ditch. Now they're, I don't know, are we under standards for the class four, the slope of the ditch? Yeah. Uh, the fall of the ditch, some rock um, retention, uh, some rock line where it comes down the hill. And the culverts, one of the culverts was pulled up and was replaced with a, a sewer pipe, a green sewer pipe. I don't know if you did that or. I put the, sewer, the green sewer pipe in because that, like, the culvert, that, the, that culvert's been replaced. Two or three times prior, I just threw it over the bank, which I wouldn't have done. Oh, we threw it over the bank? Yes. I wouldn't. Have now there's a culvert up further, a piece of culvert that I installed years ago because the road, the drainage was coming off the road onto my curb cut. You know, now the, the way it's cut, the way the new swale is coming down off the existing part of the coming down the hill, that forces the water to a different direction. We're afraid it's going to wash out the existing road that's there now. And if the water course was altered, and maybe if, it, if, if the work hadn't started, it would have been a whole different, you know, venture for us. But when we went to look at it, it's like, why was the permit even applied for if we already started the work? Okay, so could we do this? Could we leave it to you guys to talk some more? Come back in next time with the permit stating exactly how you've agreed it should be fixed. Yes. You've agreed to work with them. Is, am I hearing that correctly? <coughs> Would you work with them to, yeah. Yes. So if you will meet. Yeah. John? Yeah. Well, when, we, when I filled out the permit application, I mean, uh, 
I think I think I mentioned it to you at the time. I think I actually showed you the letter of intent from from Donna Fitch on the select board at the time also. I don't know why that issue couldn't have been uh, discussed at that time. Well, we weren't aware that you already did the work before you applied for it. I hadn't done any of that work before. It was January. Well, that would have been a different world. No, it was, so. we just got this um, last week. He's talking about his original zoning permit, not mm -hmm. the yeah. Oh, gosh, yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah, a little different group. Okay. Yeah, different group. So, so would that make sense to both of you to, to go and meet and then come back at our next meeting with an application in which you both agreed to the standards? At that point, we can decide whether or not to approve it. I'm going to need some more help because I'm not sure the past four about the speeding, uh, the, you know, the, the restoration of the work. Um, we're not allowed to do that on our roads. What kind of help do you need, John? As far as if we'll be responsible for re rest restoring the bank embankments and stuff. That well, would that would be Larry's mm -hmm. would be responsible for yeah. that. I mean, it's, but the requirement is it has to be seated. Mm -hmm. but immediately, all that. Okay. That's the stuff that wasn't done. So if you can get all that reduced to writing and, and something you two can agree on, and you can come back in together next week, or uh, two weeks from now, then we can look at that. Does that make sense to everybody? In two weeks? Yeah, we'll, we'll put you in on the June 22nd. Is that three weeks? Is that three weeks? Three okay, weeks. When, I'm sorry, June 12th. <laughs> Whatever the next meeting is, okay. on June 12th. Either of the interim road commissioners feel comfortable being involved mm -hmm. in scoping that? Yeah, I mean, I went and took pictures of, of it, and I know we've talked about some of the concerns, like where the ditching was, and um, but yeah, and part of that, if you'd like, I'll be better. Excuse me. Hmm? I'm just cooking it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> John, can you bring me with the table? I have to go over there. She needs to get her screen out of the sun. Too much. Thank you. Thank you. That's perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that's all right. I'll have it. Okay, so they, yeah, sorry. I'll put it on the June 12th agenda. If you guys have come back together with something you've all agreed to. And, John, you need some help. I'm sorry. Just as far as the requirements are going to go. I mean, I know we're, we're, we're doing our roads. I don't know about it. That's for. Okay, well, maybe the road commissioners can do some research and help you with that. Yeah, I can help point the road commissioners to some some verbiage around that. Yeah. Construction standards. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Um, so we're not approving or denying. We're uh, delaying until June 12th when we'll look at the conditions and make sure that you guys have an agreement to move forward. I am trying to set up some contractors now um, to access that road. I I should. I, how do I get to June 12th? Can, can you, you and I but get meet you, John to discuss this? Or? Are you finding your road isn't accessible? I mean, it looked like it was well-traveled. I mean, are you worried that vehicles aren't going to be able to get in? That's why I did the, the minimal work that I did. It needs a lot more work. Okay. Well, no, I mean, there was a lot of, yeah, the water seemed to be pulling and... So what can I do between now and June 12th? Work meet with us. Um, maybe tomorrow morning. Okay. I, I think, tomorrow morning is not good. I think, Larry, if, if you guys can come to an agreement, you can be pretty sure if, if our road can, crew agrees to it that we will agree to it. So if, if you were to do something that you had, they had agreed to, I think that would be acceptable. Is that all right with everybody? Yeah, I wonder if, if in that case we should, in order to not have to wait till June 12th to commence the work, if the road crew as commissioners well can, would, would we approve, sort of enable one of us to approve it once it hits a certain threshold? Mm -hmm. 
Well, so, I mean, that's kind of the policies already set up like that. The, the policy is basically set up that the, the permit's not closed or, and the work is not considered finished until it meets the satisfaction of, of the road crew uh, or, or the road commissioner, the town, essentially. So, uh, you know, I think there's there's a path where it could be uh, the the permit could be accepted with pretty specific conditions that it's not going to be considered a complete project until it, it's kind of constructed to the satisfaction of the road crew. And I think that that, you know, if there's a meeting with the road commissioners the, and John in, in the next couple of days to get you going on a scope of work that will provide access for the contractors that you're lining up. But but that, you know, culverts and other ditching and, uh, and other work is also work to being defined so that that doesn't slow you down for coordinating what you need, what you need to do it gives you the opportunity to perform some of the work and it starts to give you an idea of what the, what the town is going to be looking for to be kind of acceptable, uh, acceptable work. Does that, does that make sense? It, ma it makes sense. Um, I also, um, I've been talking with Washington Electric Co-op about putting power in it. I've got to put in some utility poles. You know, I don't know, you know, I mean, I know they have off-road rigs that can put the poles in and all that stuff, but it sure would be convenient if they could just drive down the road to, to do all that. I guess maybe I was thinking a little bit too far ahead in advance. Uh, they'll be able to quote you a price whether there's a road there or not is going to be my guess well, <laughs> it's just I, a, bad, I mean, a matter of what equipment they're going to use to do it tomorrow for, for that <clears throat> I think Washington Electric does a separate permit before the town to work in the town's right of way to install poles right. Yeah. So you'll hear directly from Washington Electric. And will they have to get approval from the select board also? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and my guess is if they don't find the road passable for one reason or another, they'll say as a condition of getting the permit that work is going to have to be performed and you're going to be on the hook for the cost of performing that work or, or, or actually doing it. Uh, so it's it's going to be a scope of work that's going to have to get done to somebody's satisfaction, uh, and it's going to be likely the, the towns and the and Washington Electrics before they can actually get up the road. So you said that that it's built into <clears throat> this this use of town right of way permit that there has to be a final sign off. I don't yeah, I don't yeah. actually see that in here. Is it by incorporated by reference with this Title Nineteen section? Uh, so this is the, unless John can speak to language from, from the regulation specifically relative to class four uh, roads, but the class four policy, the, the last set, uh, paragraph is when the job is finished, the select board has uh, to be notified in writing uh, so that it can be arranged for inspection and approval of the work. And there's a line here in the permit itself that says final approval, road commission inspects it to make sure it was done properly. But that's after we we approve it. We approve it. He does the work. The road commissioner goes out and looks to make sure it was done as directed. Okay. So we don't have the as directed part. That part needs to be defined. Mm -hmm. So the, yep. sort of the question on the table is pending the conversation with Ann or I and John can the work commence or continue since it's already started immediately? Or does it have to wait for approval of this? Well, he's always board? taking a chance. Yeah. Because, but you've already taken a hell of a chance by starting <laughs> right. without the permit. 
um, you're taking less of a chance if you do it under the direction of the road crew than you did by just doing it on your own. Um, and I'm just giving you the heads up that as long as the road crew approves of it, you're likely to. Yeah. It's up to you how you want to proceed. You could wait until we actually issue the, you the permit or not. I, I fill out this application with the, with the map and I put stakes in there. Did somebody from the road crew actually come and see it? Three yeah. times. Yeah. Pardon me? Three times. The first Three time times. we could not believe the scope of the, we call it devastation. The way that, that the ditch was often was excavated and the dirt was just thrown to the side. I mean, if we've done that, we'd have hauled that mess out of there. It's, it's all going to contribute to run off into the streams. That's what we're looking at. And I went back and met somebody else. And we came back and looked at it again. And they said, oh my god, look at this. And then with all the, I'm not familiar with the culverts in here, but all we could see was culverts that were ripped out of the ground. And the one was a 15-inch culvert was replaced with a 4-inch SDR 35 sewer pipe. That's not acceptable. And that was some of the work that you performed. You, did you change the course of the water to the other side of the road? And that's what those pipes are going to be doing. They're going to be bigger pipes. And I don't understand that we're not going to pay for the culvert either. <clears throat> we can work it out. Yeah. That's not a problem. Okay. We don't want to stop your house. Or we were just and we, our initial visit was, oh my God, what happened here? That's how it was. What happened here was it was this much mud that I was trying to drive up in there and I had a little machine that pushed it off the side. I understand. I guess I probably shouldn't. Okay, so um, so the I guess one other thing is we have we are meeting on Thursday, if there are written conditions that we can approve, I would feel a little bit better about it, honestly, because you started the work before the permit. So it feels like it, it, it feels right to me that there should be agreement between you of how you move forward before um, before we approve the permit, quite frankly. So I, um, we've sent the morning out for Thursday's meeting already forward. Yes, yeah. but that doesn't preclude us from sending out another one. True. Okay. But does it have to be another, it has to be warned that that yeah. we would consider, reconsider his permit? Yeah. Okay. So, so in other words, we are having a meeting on Thursday and you have the opportunity to come in on Thursday. Sorry. I think there might be another option rather than adjourning at tonight's, at the end of tonight's meeting, claim tonight's meeting will be continued to Thursday, and you can take up this topic on Thursday then, well, even without having to warn it. The trouble is we didn't warn what we're planning to do Thursday for this agenda, so we can't just continue the meeting. It's got to be a new meeting. Um, even even though the OR application is on this. Well, yes, but the dog issue is not, which right. is why we're meeting on Thursday. But they could be separate. We could continue this meeting to the 15 you, you minutes before the dock. At 7 p.m. At 7 p.m. But it sounds like John can't make it. Do do we feel like we can meet before then? And you can. I can meet with you guys before then. Yeah, I'm leaving Thursday. Okay. So maybe we should set up a meeting, and then some combination of Ann and I can um, present the road crews perspective. Okay, so you're suggesting warning a meeting for this Thursday, or yeah, continuing this meeting until Thursday at 7. All right. Mr. Roy. Yes. Tomorrow is the last meeting of the day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Tomorrow's not good. Would Wednesday be back? Yes. I can do Wednesday. What time? We can be you guys can arrange offline yeah. without yeah. taking everybody's yeah. time here. Yeah. All right, so that's the plan. We will continue this on Thursday after it's been warned. Okay, thank you. you. No, when we adjourn the meeting today, you're going to, uh, you're not going to adjourn it, you're going to continue it until next Thursday at 7. Okay, this Thursday at 7. Yeah. Yep. This Thursday at 7. Okay, all right, moving nice on. Report on cybersecurity training with Tegan. Well, I spent uh, two days in the library doing cybersecurity training. 
Scanlon was also there for a half day, which is really nice. He was there for the first half day, and he learned a lot. Um, there were some really good things that I learned. Like, we don't have a lot of private records. We mostly have public records, so we don't have things people don't want out in public. We don't have a lot of credit card information. We mostly do checks. Yeah, that part was really valuable. Um, also, most of our records we have physical copies for, so if any ransomware attack did happen, they are like, we have all your stuff. We'd say, we have a lot of our stuff. Not everything, but Sander prints out a lot of the financial stuff. My whole job is making sure we have physical copies of land records and all that stuff. So some of the things are really positive. Also, uh, when I called Holland up and I was just like, hey, can we chat sometime about cybersecurity? He like, was super excited. He was like, I love, yes, if you want to talk about it, I will talk about it. This seems to be something he gets really psyched about. So I'm sure we could talk to RV Tech about if we wanted to do a, give more funding or if we want to do any trainings, I'm sure he would have lots of advice uh, to give us. VLCT also has cybersecurity resources. There's lots of places to go. Um, the two-factor authentication that we all had to do for our new email addresses is a pain, but everyone's going that way because it's just a lot safer. It was also recommended, like, your password should be really long. It shouldn't have any words in it. It should have numbers and letters and symbols, and it should, you know, it should look like your cat stepped on the keyboard, basically. The person who did the training said all of his passwords, but he's a, he's a cybersecurity guy, were at least 22 characters. It was, like, wild. But he has one of those password keys, and he recommended we all have a password key so you're not all writing them in a notebook or saving them in a note on your iPhone, but have one of the key things. Um, you're like an app? Yeah, like one of the apps that saves all your passwords or creates them for you, and that way you don't have to remember them all, but they're safely hidden inside a thing. Except for the one that just got hacked and all the keys. I was going to yeah. say, yeah. Yeah. that yeah. gets hacked, yeah. and then... You do whatever works best. Um, mm -hmm. Ransomware attacks are everywhere. They're happening all the time to everybody. It's, he, he seemed to think it was not an if, but a when. Um, and he recommended that we have a plan as a town. Who do we call? Who do we talk to? What information do we share with the public? What information do we share with our lawyers? Which of our vendors do we need to get in touch with if that happens? You know, assuming that it will happen, and it probably will, uh, we should have a plan like we would for any other emergency because it happens fast and everyone panics. Um, mm -hmm. So that is a thing in the long run to think about is creating a plan for a ransomware attack. Uh, the usual things, report your spam. Please do not open it. Be careful about it, don't share things, don't use thumb drives. Apparently thumb drives are like the germiest germy things that you can ever do on a computer. I didn't realize that, I don't use them anyway, but apparently they're awful. Um, yeah, I think that was all I really, oh, also we have like, everything we have is backed up on a server. That is all backed up on another server. Things can still get in, like nothing is perfect, but we do have a pretty good system at this point. The server is not that old. So if we wanted to move to the cloud at some point, we can, but what we have seems to be working well, and there are arguments in either direction, cloud, physical server with, on our property. Like, Oh, and our internet at the town office, all the town computers are on a different um, network than the, the people who come in on the Wi-Fi. We don't share that password with anyone. So it is a different wireless network, a different network. Do you, do you use a VPN? in the town office? I haven't looked at that yet. I know I need to. I'm assuming we do. Yeah, that's how um, Sandra accessed those yeah. things. I know we do yeah, on our the laptops we've been given. Okay. And So I have a couple of questions. Um, yeah. So a plan, a ransomware attack response plan, is there, does VLCT have a model one? There are lots of model ones out there. I can do some homework and find some. Okay. So that we can, and then there are organizations here in Vermont and everywhere that will go through your plan with you and be like, this is pretty good. This is something you might need to change. So there are resources out there. And there's big Vermont groups that do cybersecurity, whether they're government or non-government. There's lots of people working on this in the state. It's a big thing. It seems to be growing really quickly. So there's lots of resources if you want to reach out and find people to help with these things. Mm -hmm. And what about data minimization? Did they talk about that? And, and you know, if there is data that we're collecting that we don't need to be collecting? They did not talk about that, no. Yeah, because I, I think it, it's kind of a philosophy of cybersecurity is just, like, collect as little as you humanly need. Yeah. 
and then keep it for as little time as possible. And obviously, you know, the town office needs to keep it for as long as someone is, you know, I don't know. Oh, well, there are state regulations that help me keep lots of things. Uh, and I, Jeremy created a record detention policy. I am working on going through things, but it's, it's a lot. It's one of those things that is never the top of the priority list. And so I'm trying to make sure we do clear things out as we can. Mm -hmm. But I also don't deal with the finances. I haven't talked to Sandra about this because she has been so far underwater with everything she's had to do. I think she has more of the dangerous data, like the stuff we wouldn't want to get out. Um, so talking about it with her is a longer term goal once she's sort of, or the next treasure probably is more likely. Mm -hmm. Does the town have ransomware insurance? I know it's but I understand if you get it, they, the insurance company puts a lot of constraints on you, tells you what to do. It's kind of like a, it would be a good lesson on what to, what to do to keep the policy there. I'm just wondering if you've thought of that. It's very expensive. It's expensive, yes. And most people who do ransomware find out what your deductible is and ask you for this much so that you have to pay, you still have to pay a boatload. Anyway, they find out just how much you can pay. So they probably wouldn't ask this for much in the grand scheme of global finance, but it would feel like a lot to us. And, and your biggest liability with, rans with ransomware is that they're, they're going to lock access to the files that you need to operate. Right. And they're going to make it painful to operate. They're not going to likely steal your money, though they could potentially do that. But that's a much harder thing to do. There are other controls in place. So, you know, I think to um, Tegan's point um, and to likely RB's point is having a documented plan in place, but then um, sufficiently backing up files and, and assets so that they are redundant or separated, partitioned in a way that if somebody says, we've got all your stuff, you can say, okay, you've got all our stuff, but we also still have all of our stuff, um, is, is kind of how you mitigate that. Um, one of the continuations of the kind of centralized email conversation uh, with uh, RB Tech is going to be uh, continuity and backups for the email systems so that like those are being archived in a way that is partitioned um, and we can now set that up. It doesn't necessarily have to be part of like the Microsoft. They have a, a separate widget for doing that and we've kind of tabled that until a lot of dust settles. So I think um, to the extent that you can kind of keep an eye on when would be an appropriate time to maybe re-engage that conversation, I think that would be worthwhile. Um, so that, to your point, we're not just carrying massive emails that are going to have lots of sensitive information in them. There can be a process for automatically kind of purging and archiving in a way that is a little more automated and controlled. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, and for, for this plan, you said long-term, that's something to work on. Um, is it, is there like a time of year where maybe we could ask you to begin working? I, I mean, I don't know if that's appropriate uh, appropriate task for you or if it has to be like a committee or... They usually recommend doing a committee um, because you, there's a lot of people involved in, in an attack. Um, the school went through these attacks this past year and yeah. um, the head tech guy from the school, I'm forgetting, Klein, was there and he was he was telling us it's amazing how many people you have to call when something like this happens mm -hmm. because there are so many contacts and so many people who are affected by it. Um, so they recommended having a boatload of people on your committee. I don't think we need a committee quite that large, but it's definitely something that we would want people in the community, we would want emergency management. If we could have someone legal, that would be really great, but it's not important. Um, a PR type person, just to figure out how to do messaging with the public. Like, there's just a lot of different moving parts and something like that. I'm happy to start to look at some sample things and maybe start talking to people about who might be interested in being involved in that. Could you ask RB specifically if they'd be interested in having a member on that committee? Uh, I can. And then yeah. also ask whether or not they do risk assessment um, so that they can 
kind of help us scope out what a plan would look like that's right size to the town's risk. Mm -hmm. It would be great to have somebody from RB involved. Uh, as we all know, cybercrime is a rapidly evolving problem, and somebody at RB would be in the best position to understand what's coming down the road. Yeah, and, and to recommend what, what the action items are, the next steps, you know, they're going to be much more well suited to give very specific recommendations that are right sized to our present risks um, and, and the scope of work or steps. I mean, it's all kind of arbitration uh, or arbitrage rather, uh, or just risk assessment. Um, so that'd be great if they could kind of weigh in on that a little bit. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you so much for that report and for going to that. Yeah, thank um, you. Okay, any other questions? All right, petition to change speed limit on Lightning Ridge Road, presenter Michael. Um, I'm here. Uh, hi. <laughs> and I'm sorry, how do you say your last name? Properly, it's Lagnon. Sure. Lagnon. No one gets it right, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we have a copy of the petition and um, the, the signatures and basically, Michael, we did check in, Ann Winchester checked in with um, Keith, Coven at the Regional Keith Coven at the Regional Planning Commission specifically to the question of, there was a, you know, a John Brabant raised a little bit of a question mark about the need for the speed studies. The speed studies are absolutely needed and required, and also the previous select board did not properly warn the changes. So we are going to move forward with we have four we've we've asked for four speed studies, one of which is Lightning Ridge Road, and so it's going to happen in the near future. And after that, we will warn the um, the meeting where we discuss the speed limit potential speed limit changes. And move on from there. All right. well, this is basically to show you that there is some support for change. Mm -hmm. There's a problem in that road, and uh, that's that's the purpose. No, it's not binding, but it certainly is something we want. There is support for it. It's not like it's um, one or two people. It's it is a, a problem. People are driving too fast. So mm -hmm. anyway, that's the that's the purpose of this. Is to it's advisory, but to show you that it's it's it's, it's real. Yeah. And I know the town road crew did a good job. I put up a couple of uh, speed signs, or whatever I call them, today up on, or at least one on Lightning Ridge Road. And I saw another one higher up when I was driving today going up through. Um, the radar yeah. sign. The radar thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, good. But, of course, as one of the road crew said, it's only as good as it's enforced. And, uh, which made me, my other thought, uh, I know the Washington County Sheriff is charging more. <clears throat> but um, in terms of the overall bill for the town, or the tax rate, they'll probably raise taxes at what, a couple, a penny or two on the hundred, on, on a thousand, uh, a thousand, like that. It's not going to cost co co that much more in terms of our overall tax bill to have a little more enforcement. Uh, well, one of the reasons we prioritized and put the two up on Lightning Ridge already is we gather information from those signs. Mm -hmm. And so we can download that information and it'll give us a better idea of when enforcement would be helpful. Because mm -hmm. there's no sense, you know, paying for enforcement at a time of day you're not seeing many speeders. Yeah, but you'll morning. often see patterns. It's the morning and it's school time. Right. So, Right, so we'll look at those patterns um, and, and that can help us determine when to have, have enforcement on site. Okay. One last bit of analogy here. Uh, Danville, back in the what's been the late 80s, early 90s, they had a problem near their school. People were just going and they lowered the speed and they had the Caledonia count, County Sheriff. And they were nailing people like there was a you know, fish in a bucket, is that the, that's the analogy? And it, it did it and did it and did it. And finally, people smartened up. I know we get calls in my office all the time about you know, speeding tickets. We get involved. But the reality is that put fear into these people. They, they drove through town like over, looking over their shoulders. 
And in, 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 the, in the end, they didn't, the sheriffs weren't there all that much, but people, at least most people, were locals. Were, and it's kind of like uh, it worked. <laughs> um, so that's, I'm just saying that's uh, the unknown sometimes keeps people slow down, at least the ones who are local speeders. <laughs> Yeah. Well, no, and that's one of the things that I think by doing the speed studies and having yep. them come out and because it'll make it concrete and legitimate, it's one of the things the sheriff's office had said is that currently, depending on the roads and the signage and whatnot, they wouldn't be able to actually ticket people. Like, they wouldn't be successful, so it would be unproductive um, use of them in many ways. So I think we're trying to lay the foundation to get all the pieces in place so what when they do come we're using them to the best of their ability um, when they have the capacity to actually put fear into people. <laughs> but you know what I mean about cause people to like really <coughs> give pause <coughs> and slow down. It wouldn't it wouldn't be a bad thing to do that you know, in the morning uh, before school or or early afternoon, that's when you see the most speeders. Uh, there's one person, a student who Forrester, who, who every morning goes down through there, must be on his way to work, but he, he's clearly he's going over 35. Um, so I'm just pointing that out. <laughs> I just do an example of that. Anyway, okay, well, thanks. Thank and, you. Uh, well, thanks for bringing it to us. That's, uh, yep. that's it. Okay. Yeah, no. Here we Thanks for the road crew for putting that thing up. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the Merck grant application for energy efficiency in the town buildings. And that is, we've got Scott, David Sheets, John McCullough, Cliff Emmons. Um, do you want to come up and join us? <laughs> <laughs> So Scott's going to lead you. <laughs> yeah. Lead you through this. So I, in early May, I sent a note to, uh, to this web board. Uh, it talks about it. Sort of outlines what the Merck grant is. Um, does everybody, has everybody had a chance to do that? Jamie? Tuesday. In yeah. May 2nd. Okay. Sent to... First one I ever sent to the new address. <laughs> Did not get the site for the cars from the flat there. Um, well, it, so the Municipal Energy Resilience Grant Program um, is uh, designed to bring energy efficiency to towns all over Vermont. Um, in the memo that I sent, I made two mistakes, and the first one was uh, that, it, that, that I thought it was going to be all be, I had understood it was going to all be state funds, but in fact there's some uh, federal funds going to be involved, so we should really get Sandra to take a look at the timing for this. Um, and uh, let's see. Oh, so, sorry, why are there federal funds involved? Just to bring the total up higher, it's two million four hundred, uh, two two million four hundred thousand of state funds and almost twenty four million of ARPA funds are are going into the pot. Uh, these grants are five hundred thousand maximum per town, mm -hmm. so they need a lot of money. Is that does that answer your question? Yeah, I don't think they're. They're separate pools, though. I, I think it's treated as one grant program, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. And it's administered by BGS, so I don't I don't think you're dealing with a different grantor. I think you're dealing only with BGS. Okay, I was I. I believe you're correct. Which which makes it but maybe easier. Nevertheless, for accounting purposes, it may be something that 
that yeah. the staff needs to be aware of. I mean, in, in right. the act itself, they mention of two different sources of funds. We just should get Sandra to look at this. Okay. And I have a copy of the act here for anybody who would like to review it. Um, I'm involved because I'm a, I'm a member of the Friends of the Callis Town Hall. We would love to have uh, money to insulate and heat up, upstairs, and this looks like a good source of it. There are actually three grants. One is called the Community Grant. That's 400000 and we could basically use that for whatever we want to use it for. But it would be my recommendation that it's, it's a very easy application uh, that I would apply for it in consultation with Somebody on the select board just to show what I was doing. It's a it's a Google form, um, and focus that on administration of future energy grants, so we could hire hire somebody to help with administration. You said that's a four hundred thousand dollar pool. Uh, four, it's four thousand dollars. Oh, four thousand dollars is right. the grant yeah. that you would be applying it's for, and that's for like the audits and whatnot. The audit. And I was mistaken about this. I said that was also 400,000. 4, uh, that's just for the, it's not, a, there's no money involved. It's just doing an application, and then this uh, BGS has hired uh, energy audit people, and they would come in and do it. So there's, there's no more money involved. It's just, we have to give them a lot of information about our town buildings to get, to get the highest level of audit. Mm -hmm. And that's a pretty, that will be a pretty complicated application process. But an audit is much needed, isn't it? Oh, it's, uh, there's lots. I don't, I don't really actually know much about the town garage and the town office, but certainly upstairs, we need a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's what provides the basis for the 500,000. So the, the assessment is what puts you in a position to get the big one, the one that actually does it, right? And I think going to go ahead on this, it would be good to have, I'm not quite sure what, a, a subcommittee, a working group um, to do this application. It's fairly complicated. I'm, I'm glad to uh, take the lead on it and do the take responsibility for getting it done. Um, but I would need help from, uh, well, from John McCullough, Bill Powell, Toby Talbot, people at the town office. They wouldn't necessarily have to be on the working group, but we just would need to talk to them. Is there an obligation in applying for the assessment for it to be kind of a comprehensive inventory of, of town buildings and structures? That's exactly what they're aiming for. Um, all town facilities. Yeah. It doesn't obligate Callis to do anything in the grant application other than what we want to do. But it does broadly give us a lot of good information for the future, even beyond the grant. Mm -hmm. it's, we, could, we could use it for lots of other grant applications once we have the, yep. the uh, assessment in hand. Um, I'd like to propose that some two, two different uh, motions to uh, one to appoint me and David and Cliff uh, as a group to apply or to, yeah, to apply for the uh, assessment grant. Um, and, the, and separately, to appoint just me in consultation with Gabrielle or somebody to apply on behalf of the town for the $4,000 MERP community grant for support of administration and future energy grants. So the, the, the community grants can be done right away and I, as I understand it, that money will just come immediately to the town and Sandra can bank it and then we need it to hire an administrator. That's good. The, um, the, the actual application for the assessment has not been released yet, so it's a little complicated to know what to do with that. But I think 
but David Cliff and I can probably get going on that once it's released, and I don't know, you could encourage us to <laughs> to uh, write the grant and bring it bring it to the select board. This all of this work is on behalf of the select board. It's the town doing the application. Mm -hmm. um, is it? Do you have in mind that the upstairs is like the first order of business, or would you? It is for me because I'm on the. <laughs> <laughs> and it is for me. Yeah. And it is for John. Yeah. <laughs> and do you? Is there a ballpark figure involved with weatherizing up there? Not yet. Yeah. yeah. That's. We'll get that from the assessment. Wasn't there one from I don't know 2015 or some before the work? Commence? I think the assessment will probably override anything that's. Yeah, I know. I'm just curious what the ballpark. Yeah, yeah, it is. It could, I mean, it could be a lot. It could be, could be five hundred thousand. To weather is up there. Huh. Yeah, huh. Heat and heat and. Okay. Um, would and it would be the, it would be for the whole building. It, it includes um, uh, EV plug-ins. I think they're really trying to sell uh, um, heat pumps. Hmm. I'm not sure that we want to buy, but, but that's part of the. That's a big part of it. Was the heating system not? Upgraded in the building from the new heating system was was sized to heat the upstairs space, providing of course it has some kind of insulation in it, and that heating pipe for run upstairs. There's stubs in each corner for radiant baseboard along the walls, That's so cool. it's it's ready to go once once the upstairs is insulated enough, so it makes sense to start heating it. We just sort of plug in the baseboards. Yeah, it could it could be done. For a lot less than five hundred thousand. Right. I mean, yeah. You know, we just need. To, that's what the assessment is going to be for, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. So. Would the is it your understanding that the assessment, in addition to coming up with kind of a, a comprehensive list of the town assets and buildings and that sort of thing, would also assess kind of what the impacts of doing a retrofit or an improvement so we're likely to come out of that assessment with a prioritized list of, of of which projects are going to have the greatest return for the town i don't know i don't know and, and they haven't you know the bgs hasn't released any information about that yet yeah so it was supposed to be out a month ago and it hasn't come up yet uh, that's something we would need, obviously. And, and I think certainly the select board would be involved in, I mean, in uh, how to distribute the funds. It, it could well be that we'd want to do a little bit of work on all three of the buildings, rather than a ton of work on the town hall. Um, right. That's something to figure out down the road. I think one of the ideas is there's a big portion of the town garage that's currently unheated space. Um, that would be useful to them to have a, at least partially heated space. Um, so that wouldn't necessarily come up as a priority in terms of energy efficiency because there's currently an unheated space, but it could be something we could decide was a priority yeah. because we need that space yeah. to be heated, yeah. just as an example. Yeah. Yeah, I, and that's definitely allowable in in this construct, this it's, grant program, it's, it's to take an unheated okay. space and heat and convert all it. State, all town facilities are to be assessed, and then you'd be in a good position to look at the needs and make the decision as to what the application <laughs> should consist of. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So, someone, okay. yeah. so um, you said that the second grant would be to hire an administrator. That's the person who would take care of all the reports and mm -hmm. keep track of the money and so on? I think so, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Those are the kind of things that need, that need doing. Um, also, I mean, that would get us started. Uh, we can use up to 10% of the $500,000 grant for oh. administration. Uh, 
it's nice to see that they're finally starting to bake that into the grant. <laughs> right? And it's, it's written into Absolutely. the act that, that, that they yeah. want this to be easier for towns yeah. without full, full-time paid administration yeah. Yeah. for grants to, to run. Yeah. So that's very encouraging about this program. They're just a little behind. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think what, at the moment, what I think we need from the select board is to um, appoint me to apply for that uh, community grant, and then to appoint the, uh, a working group to get going on the uh, assessment once the once it's been released, and obviously bring that bring our bring that application to the select board to, for comment and approval. So, I would, I would ask for two motions. <laughs> one of them is to approve Scott, and the second one is to approve Did Jeff. Did you say there's a so Rose can get it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Move to approve Scott Bassage in consultation with Gabrielle. Well, if you have a grant in Scott, you can just I'm give it. I'm going to give it. Well, go ahead. I got part of it, but thank yeah. you. All right. And then to appoint uh, Scott, David, and Cliff. Uh, to get going on the assessment grant once it's once the application has been released. Now, if it's a whole appointed committee, yeah, they probably have to. Then to, you would be uh, subject to open meeting. Yeah, I'm not. I am not afraid of open meeting. <laughs> Everybody in the world is afraid of open meeting. I know how to post things. Yeah, I've been doing it all my life. <laughs> no big deal. Good. If you appoint them as like an ad hoc work group, does that have to be an open meeting? I don't think ad hoc work group is part of the open meeting law. <laughs> it's I'm just trying to get around that to see if it's possible legally. Don't worry legally. about it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> it's no big deal. Okay. Someone want to make a motion? Actually, maybe Rose read it, somebody can just say something. Right. <laughs> you, Rose, can you read the two motions back Sure. Um, this is from Scott's paper. Um, there would be a motion to approve Scott Bassage in consultation with John McCullough and David Sheets to apply on behalf of the town of Callis for $4,000 MERCP community grant for support of the administration of future energy grants. So moved. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, that's that one. And, or was that, I'm sorry. Yep, that, so then the second one would be yeah. The subcommittee. What would be the second one, Scott? I guess the subcommittee of the select board, or how would you like to handle it too? Does it need to be a subcommittee until the application is ready for submission? Can we just kind of appoint the three of you to keep it? You could appoint me to work on it. To work on it until it's ready. Appoint me to work on it, and I will just call on whoever I need for help. That that makes more sense. All right, so is there a motion to approve Scott Bassage to apply for the community grant? To organize an application for the, or no, not the community grant, that's the- The MERC community. community. Yes, the assessment grant. The is the 4,000, that's easy. Okay. The hard one is the assessment grant. Right. Uh, Got it. That's, and then, yeah. and then the big one is the big one. <laughs> I'd be. I'd make a motion to uh, appoint Scott uh, to organize a application or prepare an application mm-hmm. for yeah. the larger assessment energy assessment grant Good. on behalf of the town and yeah. report back when Good. that's ready for submission. Excellent. Good. Good. I'll second that. Okay. Further discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. There'll be more. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Scott. Thank you guys. All right. Thanks. Status Thanks. of acoustics work in Town Hall. John, don't you think you should move out? <laughs> <laughs>
It's all part of a clever ruse to get you to sleep the front. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I met with David last week, and we agreed that the way to handle the acoustics we stand here would be to uh, deal with it incrementally with the things that we know that we need. Um, wall hangings, the, uh, the blinds, roller shades, anything that uh, anything that stops this reverberation, this reflective sound back and forth. Um, in my opinion, the little work that's been done now with upholstered chairs and a few wall hangings have already made a, a big difference in the, in the way that just speaking sound reverberates in the space. It's going to improve. If it doesn't, if, we, if we've done all this stuff, the, the inexpensive low-hanging fruit stuff and it's still a problem, then we can look into tectum panels or, or some kind of something on the ceiling, but those are all uh, disruptive and expensive, so let's do the easy stuff first. That's it for acoustic. Oh, and I will be working with a couple others uh, in town to deal with this, the cracking on the floor. It just, I've tried everything I can to stop it. We've got to screw it down. We just have to make sure we don't hit the radiant pipes when we do that. So it'll, it'll probably take till the end of summer to get that, that dealt with. What's the deal with the shutters? Oh, they're, they're going up. Um, we were looking at, a, I thought we had it figured out. Andy Police and I were going to install them and the highest shutters we were going to use a lift. It would be a tow behind lift. Um, easy to get here. Um, but then uh, someone chimed in and said, no, we don't want that. We want a bigger lift. Um, so I want to talk to Andy about it. I haven't done so. I should have by now. Um, Andy and I can hang all the shutters on the ground floor. That's easy enough to do. We can hang the, the two shutters on the, the operating ones on the top. It's the big permanent, the big you know, five by five ones at the very top where we need the lift. And so I'll keep you guys in the loop. But you may see shutters on the ground floor in another two weeks. You hardly need a ladder to do that. Mm -hmm. Donna? I just want to point out that John's a lister. I'm what? <laughs> a lister. Yeah, then what if oh, oh. you all to be taxed, there's a deadline. And that's kind of what he's working on now. Um, but I have some ideas for other things on the wall. I've talked to Scott. He's got really great photos, pre-renovation. We want to do a little photo montage of what this building was like so people don't forget the squirrels running up the wall. <laughs> and so there will be we need ahead, all the stuff like the mm -hmm. parcel maps and the uh, mm -hmm. and like zoning map district maps, lot. all that stuff. Yeah. We're going to start using this on a regular basis for DRB and planning commission, etc. Mm -hmm. And we've got to have those resources available, right? Yeah. Yeah. Have you ordered the shutters yet? Oh, sorry, the shade shades. Oh, thank you. They've been ordered. The shades have been ordered. Okay. okay. Oh, yes, they're in the mail. It occurred to me that it would be good if the ones for the top floor were matching. They don't have to be matching. The, the, the people I bought these roller cutters from, they're, from what you see on the outside, they're white. That's it. Okay. So, mm -hmm. so it doesn't matter what the interior color is. From the outside of the building, when the shutters are drawn, they're white. Um, upstairs, I mean, you've got, there are so many problems upstairs. One is that the, there's no energy efficiency in those windows at all. They're going to need something that resembles a storm. And then for blackout, for theater productions, they're going to need some kind of heavy drapes. Both those things will help, not only with the, uh, with the acoustics, but with the thermal things. But even in the short term, it, couldn't it be helpful to have shades up there just for temperature control of the entire building? I'm sorry. Shades for upstairs, wouldn't that help with temperature control for the entire building, like in the heat of the no, summer? No, not really, no. There's probably better insulation between the floors here than most people have in their houses. Um, it's, it's all dense packed, it's full, full 10 inches. Okay. Yeah, so, no, as long as the, you know, that, that door is kept closed, we, we don't lose any heat upstairs. Okay. All right. Um, so we don't need to take any actions. Thank you for no, ordering no. that stuff and you keeping know, going in, with this. In, in, you know, in a couple of months, if, if the acoustics still seem to be a problem, then 
and things aren't working out. But within a couple of months, next eight weeks, we'll have more stuff on the walls. See how it goes. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Okay. Thanks, John. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um, so status of highway grants and capital planning, Toby. Um, so I sent you some documents. Oh, I'm sure you all looked at them for the meeting. Yeah. Um, so currently, um, the Kent Hill culvert, which is this culvert here, is um, out for the scoping grant. Oh, yeah. um, I talked to Keith at CBRPC, and the uh, RFPs are going out this week or next for the scoping vendors to uh, apply for. And so that's a work in progress. Essentially, when he gets some responses to the RFP, I will meet with him and, and look those over and help approve those um, vendors for, for the work. Um, the next grant is uh, was Lightning Ridge Paving. That's an old grant that I'm waiting for reimbursement on. Um, essentially, we did more work than the grant, and I've asked for an additional $8,000 to cover our expenses. I'm still waiting from, to hear from the trans on whether they approve the, the increase in the grant. Um, the clay boils, we've already received the reimbursement for that. That was the Moscow Woods Road that we did the clay boils on last year. That's all taken care of and closed. Um, Moscow Woods Bridge, uh, you guys signed an agreement with DeWolf. So the engineering is starting to have the, um, the scope of whatever work to prepare that bridge abutment is. So that's a work in progress. Chris Temple is it's not, he's reached out and said he's working on it, and I'll follow up with him. And so when we get a, a scope, then it will go out to bid for contractors. Um, I'm not sure what the timing will be on that, because uh, we're pretty late in the season right now for contractors. And if we don't go out to bid this season, will it make it through the winter? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it'll be fine. Oh. Yeah, I mean, we've essentially made it a single lane bridge, so okay. the other side of the, of the abutment is fine on, on the north side. Uh, just not good for two, two, two vehicles at the same time. Um, Loose Road. So Loose Road was originally applied for in 2020. Um, it was granted uh, by the state for $90,000. And then the pandemic hit. And for a year, the state did not um, give any grants out. They just gave a lump sum to each town for the projects. So it was reapplied in 2021 for approval in 2022. We did receive the grant for $90,000, and uh, we started working on a, um, an engineering design for that culvert, and then our engineer died. And so that put it off, so we had to go to another engineer, pick up the pieces. Then we had an issue with both Alfie and I leaving, and no one picked up the ball at that point. So we're still behind the eight ball. So I just recently, reviewed the project with um, Chris at Chase and Chase Engineering, who was picked up, picked up the engineering. And the cost of the project has doubled. So essentially, even if we get the 90,000, we would have to come up with another 90,000 to do the project. I'm working with the VTrans people right now to either double the original grant or give up that grant and get a new one for Loose Road. So it's sort of up in the air and I have no idea what the result will be. So that's, essentially it's been put off for almost two and a half, three years, just because of all of those issues. Not much we can do about it because it's grant money and we really can't do it on our own. It's not in our budget. Um, The, the grants and aid, so that's money that the state gives us if we do work on what's known as connected segments. So you guys are all familiar with that? I want me to go through that for you. So if you look at the second page of information that I gave you, it essentially defines what the MRGP is. So the Municipal Roads General Permit essentially says that we need to do certain practices on sections of road 
they're connected to hy hydraulic items, either a stream, a pond, or a wetland. Um, <clears throat> so that's essentially what it, what it does. So if you look at the next page, this one, this is essentially, there's a portal on, on, the, on the state site that you can actually look at every segment on the road. And, and essentially in 2017, we did an entire inventory of every section of the, of the town highways. Um, so essentially, you can go and see. The problem is that this has not been updated currently. You know, as we do work, it doesn't get changed, it doesn't get updated. And that's one of the problems that I'm facing now, is that we really need to go out and, and do that. So the state relies on that road erosion inventory to, to rate us on <clears throat> how we're keeping up with the permit, the general permit. And essentially, um, because we're not updating the inventory, we're, we're in arrears. They see us that we haven't fixed a few things. We may have, but it hasn't been updated into the database. So that's a, an issue that I'm trying to work on with the road crew, with the road commissioners about how we deal with that. Um, I can do a lot of it. Um, and if you look at the page with the pie charts, so essentially there are 1,368 segments in town. Segments are 328 feet long. So there's a map and every segment has a number and it has a, a, an inventory. So of those 1,368, there are 700 that are not connected to water. So essentially we can just ignore those. They don't have, they are not, they're not critical to the permit. So that leaves 668 other se segments that we have to keep an inventory on and report to the state when we do work and keep them up to date. Um, the state is going to require probably within, I think it's in 25 or 26, that we redo the entire inventory. So that's something that will come in the future. So when that first inventory was done, I worked with CBRPC. I probably did half of the inventory and they did another half of it. And we paid them to go out and do the inventory. So that's something that I'll talk to Keith about. You know, what's their participation level in that next grant cycle? You know, that next inventory cycle. Um, I also uh, included a list of. Uh, oh, so the other thing is, uh, the last grant I just uh, received approval for a new grant this season to redo. The section of Kent Hill Road that's essentially has a wetland on either side that's near the substation. You all know where that section is. It's always in mud season. It's just a terrible nightmare. So, yeah. Um, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> so essentially, we're doing something that's really um, I've never heard of. It's called a French mattress. So essentially, we dig the road up. We put in large stone, which is sort of essentially the bed, the bed frame, so the water can actually pass through these big stones and not be, not essentially be sucked up into the road and creating a problem. So it's about 400 feet. The, the town road crew will be doing the work, so it's not going up to bid, so we'll try to get that done this season. Um, and that was for $150,000. So essentially the work that they do, we will be reimbursed for $150,000 in, in, this, in this budget year. Okay. Where do the stones come from? Wherever we can get them, yeah. I mean, before they crush, they all have these big piles of stone. So they call it a type one or a type two stone, and they're you know, three or four feet. And we pile them up, so there's this. End. And then, <clears throat> so the stones don't fill in with dirt between the openings, they put fabric down, so anything that comes down gets captured by the fabric. And that's how we build a road anyways, essentially. To, to help for drainage. Um, the other thing is we'll harden, so the shoulders of the road right now, when the water comes up, it just starts to slump in because it's all just dirt and gravel. So we'll harden that with stone on either side so when the water comes up against it on the side, it won't wash away. So that's part of the project. Um, so again, so the one thing that we really need to sort of understand and look at is how do we keep the road erosion inventory going? You know, how do we, I'm trying to work with the road crew now to get some help. 
So in the Grand Sinead, it's the same thing, where if we do the work to improve the roads to the standard that the, the state's looking for on those connected roads, crowning, no berms on the side to keep the water soaked sheets off, ditching, replacing culverts that are bad, we can get reimbursed for that, but I have to actually fill out a form for every piece of road that I'm going to repair. So right now, I'm working with the guys on the crew to say, tell me where you want to work, and then, then I'll see if that's an available thing. It's, the, the pro not, it's not a problem, but the, what you really have to do is you have to record your time and materials and your, and your equipment in order to get reimbursed. So whenever they're out working, I need to make sure they're they're taking notes. And that's how I can do the reimbursements. If I don't have that information, I can't get money back. So I'm working with the road crew right now. They're kind of a little overwhelmed by that, having to pay attention to all of that. But <clears throat> um, we'll work it out. Um, so that's what's up on grants. Would having a shared document that is accessible from a town account <coughs> help that? So so there is a so there's a couple of apps. So there's a there's a map app where you can actually open a map and look and it and you click on it and that segment comes up with all the information. Whether it is, it is it also links to another app where you can actually update it. So <clears throat> I have that software. I can do that pretty simply, but it just requires time and, and energy. I can hopefully maybe train one of the guys in the crew or somebody else to do that as well. But you have to understand what a crown is, you have to know what burn removal is, you have to know a ditch, whether it's a good ditch or a bad ditch, and those kind of things. So it requires some knowledge of roads. I've talked with Anne a few times and she may be interested Not in... Not the app and things. everything. <laughs> Most right. of the time open it, yes. Right. So, and I, I have a couple of other people that I think might be interested in doing some of that field work. Um, so, you know, if I, if I work out that I find somebody that's willing to help out, maybe we can pay them some money to essentially be that inventory person. I mean, I'm sure there's money in the highway budget where we can cover some of that. Is it intuitive enough to, to train somebody to, to enter that information directly into the apps and track it through the apps or, you know, to make something easier that gathers more of kind of the core quantitative information? Um, so each segment has this inventory report, you know, does it have crown? Yes, no, doesn't. Does it have berms? Yes, no, doesn't meets, doesn't meet standard ditches. So essentially there's a form for every every segment. Yeah. That's a that's an easy tool, but you have to train somebody to be able to say, oh, there's a berm, is it good or bad? Is it not good or bad? So there's some of that knowledge of what you're looking at that the inventory the, the tool is already there. Mm -hmm. um, I can do it on my phone. Essentially the phone has the map, you just hit this and it can say change it and you can update that. But it requires you having feet on the ground. You've got to go to the segment and look at it in order to report it. And cell phone reception. No, it's, a, it's all, <laughs> oh, it's all it, GPS. Oh, it's all GPS. GPS. Yeah. yeah, so the map is actually on your phone. And it's, yeah. a, it's an interactive map on your phone. And it relates to an interactive database. So essentially, you store the information and then you, down, you upload it to the portal. Nice. And you've collected it. So it doesn't require cell phone service. Otherwise, it would be worthless. Yeah, right. right. So again, um, I'm, I'm doing some of that, so essentially we're about 50 segments behind on updating them, get them off the high priority list. I will take care of that. That will get us off the, the bad, you know, bad guy list. But then we're going to have to continue to update. There, there are probably sections that we've already fixed that are not in the inventory because we haven't done the update. And I may have to work or try to work with the crew so that when they're out doing something, they can pull a phone out and go, let's, we fixed it, so let's change it. And again, that's a process that I have to work with the crew guys to see if they're, you know, if, if John or Tyler or whatever, somebody has to take the responsibility of when you do the work that it's connected that you do the inventory update. Right. And that, that, will help, that will help us keep current over time. 
So once you get current, what what is this thing about having a whole new one in 2025? Well, I think it's because a lot of towns aren't keeping up to date. I mean, probably 75% of everything that's in our inventory was from 2017. So it's really not up to date. It's really not there. And so I've got 668 segments that I need to refresh. Essentially, the state's saying you can't use the old stuff. You've got to go out and look at it again and, and update it. And, you know, when you do the image, when you do the data into the inter, into the um, the portal, it dates when you did. It. So essentially, this a lot of stuff we have is all dated 2017. So they know that no one's looked at that or done anything. Mm -hmm. So so doing the inventory again confirms to them that we have done this work or our roads are in good shape <coughs> for what they're for what they're looking for. I don't think there's any financial penalty, but they keep sending me emails saying, hey, you're not in compliance. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that's what I'm trying to, trying to solve. Yeah. Scott? Could I ask the select board for us, uh, what the status of the replacement of the culvert right behind us is? Oh, um, the they've, contract, they've yeah. signed the oh. grant to have CBRPC um, put it out to bid and have the scoping studies done. And that's, they signed the CBRPC and um, <clears throat> to, to manage the scoping grant and the scoping RFPs are going out this week or next. Thank you all. Thank you. Remember, about 20 years ago, the water was just above the counter there. Actually, the building's two feet higher than us. Well, yeah. Proportionally. And the building's so building so in that, that, that. It's just barely out of there. <laughs> but. Okay. Um, any further questions for Toby? Thank you, Toby. Yeah, oh, thanks yeah. very much. All right. Review April oh, final. One quick thing. Yeah. So did, I'm working on getting the speed signs out. The radar signs. I had two. I put one up on a two by two post today, and it does work on a two two by two post. So I don't have to put the big, multi, expensive, thirty foot tall poles out there. I did because we have bases out already. I did put one on um, Lightning Ridge by Doug Lilly's on the big pole, just to see how it looked. So if people think it's just too obtrusive. Um, we don't have to use any of them. We'll find something else to do with who knows how much we spent on those parts. <laughs> Several of us know. So the one that's in the two by two post, I'm going to take out and move somewhere else and put it in so people can see you know, whether. So there will be two versions of the sign out there. And I'm really trying to stay on the two by two post because it's much easier to install. You know, you put a stake of anchor in the ground, you drop the pole, and then you're done. You don't have this big three foot concrete thing in the ground and a four and a half inch big pole. And it just, you know, it, it's overkill. So have just you so. Have you installed the signs now? Pardon? Have you used all the signs now? Have you no, no. No. I Keith Cubbin told me today that Faceton might be interested in purchasing. Yeah, I've, so I've got. I've only taken two out, so we still have five other signs that have to right. be used. Um, so if somebody wants to call Faceton and see if they're interested. Um, yeah. Um, it Keith said there, that he's still working on it, and he may find some buyers. He said a couple of towns have expressed interest. Right. But well, and I can show them pictures of what it looks like installed because I have one installed now with all okay. the hardware. So, okay. um, yeah, I'm not going to. I'm not rushing into it, but um, slowly trying to at least get some use out of the fifty thousand dollars that we spent. Right. Well, thank you for starting with lightning Ridge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just there's two of them. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. If I take one away, I might hear something. Yeah. I hear a Lily, Lily right. singing in my right. ear. Right. <laughs> Okay. Good. That's all I have. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, thanks very much. All right, Sandra. April finance report. Hi, I'm Cash here. If anybody would like one, you know, Sandra, if you, you want one, one 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 one
want one side? Um, you got one? In your packet, you have your to date uh, revenue and expense reports on the general fund and on the highway fund as of the end of April, April 30th. That is um, period 10 in the fine in the fiscal year. If you go uh, to page seven, page seven of seven, this is the uh, net um, revenues minus expenses as of the end of April. And by the way, May is not closed yet. Of course, we're, still, we're just three weeks into the month. So at this point, our expenses exceed our collected revenue by $60,000. Now this month, uh, after the true up, uh, this month meaning May, after the true up, we did receive a refund of $65,000 plus the plus from the school district and property taxes uh, that we overpaid. So, as you will come to find out, the grand list is a living list, and it does change between the time it is closed on April 1 of a given year and, uh, and the end of the, it, 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 all along until about April of the next year your property tax um, obligation to the district is driven by that initial grand list. And as the list changes, your, your meaning the town of Callis's obligation to the district also changes. So it is very typical, and it happened this year, that the bill was simply paid as presented with the knowledge that there's going to be what they call a true up in April of the next year to take a look at where we really are. And in this, and this year, as in a few years past, we received a refund of $65,000. So that looks good, right? <laughs> but you do have two months to go in your... Um, in your fiscal year, so I did do a year-to-date May. Uh, you asked me many times, what, what's the projection? And really the projection at this point looks like from the general government side, you will go about 75, perhaps as high as $100,000 into a deficit. So we'll talk about that in just a second. What does that mean? So again, Deficit spending on uh, either side of the budget, whether it's highway or general fund, you're looking at your actual collected revenues minus or minus your actual expenditures. Uh, one way you can take a look at the health of your um, fiscal year at any point in time is on page seven of seven, you can take a look and uh, see that middle column is your actual expenses. The column on the left is projected or budgeted expenses. And what that tells us is as of April 30th, we have $30,000 to finish out the year with. So that's another helpful way to take a look at these reports and get a feel or perhaps somewhat of a projection of what's coming next. Uh, what I would like to draw your attention to uh, is I kind of scoured the uh, ledgers uh, over this last month, and what I am currently researching is on page six of seven. If you would turn there, please. The station bond, uh, the East Montpelier Fire Department station bond and bond interest have not been paid. Mm -hmm. And you can see that is at least a $40, $45,000 additional expense that we're going, that the town will be paying before the end of the year. It is typically billed in September. For whatever reason, 
likely due to the change over in East Montpelier of a town administrator and business, and business manager, uh, this slipped between, between their cracks. I spoke with the treasurer today. She was unaware of what this bill was and who sent it. Was it. She did not think the treasurer's office sent it. She thought the town administrator may send it. They're both new. We will end up getting this bill in all likelihood before this year closes. And um, that is definitely an expense that has not been expended yet. So when you ask me, whoa, why, why are we going to go $75,000 into the red, this is one of the reasons this is the largest component. You also have other things that are ongoing expenses, utilities, um, phone, heat, uh, salaries, that, uh, FICA Medi, VMERS contributions, health insurance contributions, and so forth. And so they will continue through the end of June. And again, this is why I, I am projecting that deficit. If you look at highway, highway is, is good. Um, it's a little bit deeper. I flip over. You're, you're going to run into a series of pages one of four. If you turn to page four, you're going to see that as of April 30th, highway was to the good, $252,000 plus. Now, as a year to date, they are at $179,000. It is uh, it is possible, I suppose, that they would go out that far, but it's highly unlikely. So, um, Highway then has expensed less than its actual revenues right now. That's what that number in the middle means, okay? That's what that number in the middle means. And most of that number has been generated due to uh, staffing, a reduction in staffing that was originally anticipated when this budget was put together. So, if you, so, yeah, um, I was told when I did the training mm -hmm. that we can now move money, the laws change, move money between the highway and fund and the general fund. Did you check that? I am going to be checking that out. I want to see if we need our uh, software reprogrammed for that. Mm -hmm. Will it become a combined budget? Will we need reprogramming? Do you need any, I think, do you need a uh, select board motion to accomplish that? Does it need to be done by article on the floor? Now, when you read your article in the town morning, it does it 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 just talks about one lump sum of money to be raised, which is composed both of highway budget, proposed budget, and general fund proposed budget, reduced by a uh, projected amount of income from other sources other than taxes. So I, that article really fits nicely into this idea. Whether it needs to be phrased differently, uh, we need to check the legalities of that. Um, what are, is the consequence of doing that? I think we need to look at that <clears throat> up to this point in time, and we've had this discussion before in 2015. Uh, it was decided at, at town meeting via an article that um, highway excesses, that is, revenues in excess of actual expenditures, were to go into the Highway Capital Equipment Fund. And that appeared basically to be just for one year. However, the practice since that time was to move that money, uh, if it was in excess, as of June 30th, into the Highway Capital Equipment Fund. During that time, there was no provision for an appropriation on the highway budget for capital, highway capital equipment. And an appropriation, let's um, think of it in terms of, we put money away for the town hall building, we put money away for the conservation commission, we, these are appropriations, appropriations to the swim fund. So, his, and so at least during that five years, there have been no appropriations. And um, if, 
uh, depending on what you folks decide to do, that is something to think about when you are creating and developing your FY25 budget. If this is, if we're going to combine budgets, then I think you will want to be cognizant of how we continue to build and make available money in the highway fund to purchase equipment. And we do have some significant equipment uh, purchases coming up on the horizon. And I, oh, Toby's not here. Nope. Um, John's here. <laughs> John's here. And so uh, these, are, these are questions and discussions that you're going to want to have. As of this year, before the close of this year, I will have an answer for you as to whether or not you can combine this balance or not. You probably can, but the vehicle by which you do that may not be available to you in this finance, in fiscal year. There, there may be some other process that you, you're going to have to look at. In any event, um, if that is the case, it is quite possible that at this point, as of May, what is today, 22nd, it is conceivable that $100,000 will, or something like that, will roll over into the Highway Capital Equipment Fund if, if the select board so moves that, in keeping with the practice um, in the past. I will say this, uh, the prior select board in FY, 23. So in FY22, did begin an appropriation uh, budget line in the highway budget. If you take a look at your town report, you'll see it. It was twenty-five thousand dollars, but for I don't for whatever reason they didn't do it in FY23 or for FY24. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't have insight on to the uh, into those decisions for you. If we go to our last page, the balance sheet, it's a page one of one. We're going to see where we are in terms of the general fund. And historically, um, the, the reason highway and the general fund are segregated funds is that up until now, if highway had a deficit, and we are programmed to do that, by the way, if highway had a deficit, the general fund would cover it. Highway does not, historically, again, it's not vice versa. Highway uh, surpluses did not, and I use that word surplus. Uh, it, that is not a term of art, but it just for ease of conversation. Don't use that word. <laughs> but uh, an excess of revenues over expenditures in the highway budget would not cover a deficit in the general fund. So that has been historically how things have been set up. So if your highway went under, you're moving money out of your general fund, uh, or it, it's going to hit your general fund balance and reduce it. Uh, but it looks like that's going to change. And again, that's why I'm thinking it, it does that automatically in our program right now, and we may need to see, if, if you would want to go that route, we may need to see some uh, small amount of programming to change that. Uh, on your balance sheet, you're going to see that $60,000 uh, deficit down at the bottom, three numbers from the bottom. And what does that hit? Well, that hits your prior year's fund balance. and. FY22 closed $521,000, uh, FY21 closed with a fund balance of $521,000 plus. So as we spend our money and as income comes in, that next line, which is not bolded, will go up and it will go down. If you were to look at May's balance sheet, you would, you know, do a yippee ki -yay because it's only negative $11,000. But when you look at unspent monies, and we know that $45,000 is going to be just around the corner, you can see that, you know, we're just going, we're, we're here, we're in the same place at this point in time. Nevertheless, the fund balance is very, very healthy. 
the fund balance is so healthy that with a seventy-five to one hundred thousand dollar deficit, you are very unlikely to need to take a um, tax anticipation note. So, is everybody familiar with that? With that does mm -hmm. okay. So it's it's not likely that you'll need to do that. We haven't needed to do that for several years. Uh, you'll have um, what you'll have sufficient funds available to cover your expenses that first quarter until we begin to collect taxes for FY24. So it's, it's not fun to be, you know, the board that's going to have a deficit, but you are a board that is not, is not in a position where you have to collect taxes or uh, take a loan to cover a negative, negative balance. So if you were without a fund balance at the end of this year, the law provides that you are you add that to your tax rate, and you would need to collect that. And if that was not um, if, if that was not a viable solution, then a loan would have to be taken. And we just paid up. We just finished paying for that last deficit loan that we took five years ago. So I'm sorry. I, I, you mean I'm very slow at this. So nope. how is it that I can understand this to be healthy? I see a deficit of 60000 What is it that I can look at to understand if this is still healthy? The yes. second to last page is what we're looking at. Is that yeah. what you're on? Yeah, and, it, and, and we've got a fund balance of negative 60000 No, mm -hmm. you have a fund balance of this year. This year's fund balance is negative 60000 but the fund balance that is sitting in basically your checking account has been uh, created over the last several years and it's $521,000. How would I, s oh that's, so it goes that's the balance. prior, and you see there is a multiple prior years fund balance. Okay. So at, so when you look at total fund balance, was, which is the next to the last mm -hmm. line, mm -hmm. there's that $461,000. So when I say I think we're going to go, let, let's just say between seventy five dollars and $100,000, let's say $100,000, um, that next to the last line would then be $421,000. Fair to say, it's, you're you're looking at the total prior year's fund balance as a starting balance for the year, mm -hmm. uh, a representation of what we've carried over as a fund balance from the prior fiscal year. And um, that is real money. That is in the checking account. Mm -hmm. okay. So what you know, as I said, it it. it that's not a position that is enjoyable, but it's, an, a, it's a system condition that was inherited. There was a lot of momentum and you were already into the um, third quarter uh, when this board came into creation and there were a number of issues that were in play that were, could not, and were not, but could not be and were not budgeted for, um, but rest in comfort that we're not going to have to raise additional taxes over and above the proposed FY24 budget to cover a deficit. If if that total fund balance, that 461, 353, 42, were negative 60, you'd be, well, at that rate, you, you would probably collect, uh, increase the tax rate to, to make up that $60,000 difference. If it were negative $300,000, you would take a deficit loan. That's what we did the last time. So when I say it, you have a healthy fund balance, what I mean by that is you're going to be able to cover your expenses going into the next fiscal year, that first quarter, without a problem. We won't, you know, we'll, we'll be able to manage that. Any questions? Does that clarify a fund balance and how, how it works? I really wanted to come in and just do this face-to-face -to, -face to be sure you understood it. I know um, 
Jordan, you had asked, what's the projection? Well, once I saw May, and once I really dug into this uh, point by point, you know, we weren't billed for a significant uh, payment, and uh, we will get that bill. Because we don't want a $45,000 overage right away to start with FY24. That's what it would amount to. So I'll, I'll be pushing on East Montpelier to get that sorted. Uh, the last page is your due to, due from account, and it, it zeroes out, meaning that uh, all of these, we have all, we have this money in the checking account, um, and it's money that we hold for the town hall, for the town office, the technology fund, um, et cetera, hazard, uh, rather the uh, ARPA fund. Um, so these are the monies that are held, they're pooled, we get the benefit of the additional interest, we get the benefit of being able to hold them securely, as securely as the municipality can by way of using a, um, what they call a sweep account. Uh, the account is, uh, as Wendy told you, the account is um, protected by uh, government bonds and so as you hear these banks going under uh, because and and runs on banks because depositors had more in those banks than the FDIC protected two hundred fifty thousand dollar amount. Well we have much more than that but our funds are protected and we do have insurance so to speak on the full amount of our deposits. Is the two hundred sixty one seven forty two in ARPA is that part of the um, the um, total fund balance? Yes. Okay. So when that is spent, that will reduce, oh, no, 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 of the general fund balance? No, it is not. No, it is not. Okay, so the total fund balance on the second to last page of 461000 does not include the 261000 in ARPA that we're holding. That is correct. correct. And so let me draw your attention to that page so that you can understand that. If you go one page back to that balance sheet and you look at assets, and our checking account is close to $1.3 million. And then you see um, one, two, three, four lines down, the due to from line of 823904 which is subtracted by that $1.3 to uh, leave that total asset balance of 581. And so what this balance sheet does is it reduces the assets by the liabilities. And um, we, it also reports that total year fund balance and the current year fund balance. But the ARPA funds are, while pooled in that account, are separate from town assets. They are their own assets. And that list behind the balance sheet is a list of that $823,000 or so in uh, separately held and in separate funds pooled all together with town funds. And that, that's a legal and safe and secure way of doing that. I do have a question for you, Gabrielle. Are we going to be spending that $261,000, do you know, before June 30th? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. For sure not. Well, that answers a lot of questions. Thank you. Yeah, I think, um, I don't actually know, well, I know of one pending ARPA request from the, the CPA to pay the attorney but I don't know that that's been submitted formally or anything. Do you know, it? does that ring a bell to you? No. Did, Do you remember they talked about that? They, so they asked if, if they could pay the current attorney bill out of the ARPA funds instead of out of their, their funds. Uh, do you have you committed those ARPA funds? Do you have yeah. those There's funds a available? There's 100,000 that, that is committed to Curtis Pond. R right. Of that 261, 100,000 yeah. is committed to Curtis Pond. Right, and so the question just came up 
if we have the legal fees associated with the Curtis Pond project, is it better to start spending the ARPA funds or to spend monies raised through other means and save the ARPA funds for construction? And, that, and that's, a, you, that's not, a, you don't need to have a conversation okay. with me on that. If you were gonna spend that $100,000 before June 30, oh, I hope your attorney's fees aren't that no, just yet. No. Um, that I would like to know that because we have another grant that is um, hoping that our grant expenditures will not exceed, set, will not reach $750,000. So I, I, that's all I would need to, to know. And then I believe we have an emergency management request. Do we know if that, I, I saw the minutes where that money was segregated. Is that in here? Is that part of this $261,000? I think the ARPA, the generators? Yes. I believe that was part of the ARPA funding. Yeah, I think that was yeah. from and the prior yeah, so that, that money, but we had a full agenda, so I asked him if he could wait till the 12th, so that'll come up the next meeting. Yeah, and I, I was just curious about that again. Are we going to spend it all? It was that uh, there were some uh, overcommit, there was an overcommitment, at least one overcommitment of the ARPA funds. And um, I was just wondering if that was something that the way was that got resolved was actually the day that Sunday day long retreat we had. Wendy um, suggested that we um, trans book that the, the road, road yeah. signs. Yeah. I was here for yeah. that, but I didn't know if uh, the emergency management was part of the list initially generated I, I for our so. funds. Yeah. 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 That was my right question. Uh, mm -hmm. I know we reversed, uh, there was a reversal of, yeah. a bookkeeping reversal. A bookkeeping reversal, yeah. 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 So there's no longer a deficit. There's a, there's a, there's, there's still money, money that could be committed. To that could be committed to yeah. some a small project amount. or mm -hmm. another. Okay. Yes. Thank but you. I, I think the other part was mm -hmm. making sure that we don't tip over that threshold relative, uh, so that might be a, an yeah, important conversation a with the CPA to yeah. make sure that we're, the, we're not applying grant funds that would tip us over that threshold. Right. I think if, if we're not spending that 261000 if we're spending 50000 of that 261000 I think that gives That's us fine. a lot of room. Oh, okay. Uh, I was, okay. I really do. Um, sure. And I'll... Do, do, do we think it will be more? Well, let's see. The emergency management request was twenty. He really is looking for eight or nine thousand dollars now. Unfortunately, I don't have it right in front of me. And that's. It seemed that yeah, totally. I think it started at eight and then it got and moved then, to twelve or something. Something like that. Like so that. It, was in that it was in that neighborhood. And so then the CPA is at, at, I was thinking sixteen. Yeah, it's on page uh, twenty-five of the town report. But he wasn't looking for all of it in this fiscal That's year. Right. Right. He was looking for a part of it uh, now, and then the, yeah. the rest in FY20. I, and I didn't bring the amount requested. Do you happen to remember? I don't. I have on my computer over here. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. it was eight or nine thousand dollars, and then the balance in FY24. So if we know where eight thousand is going out, and then attorneys' fees are probably less than twenty-five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like four or something. Yeah, under ten. So that gives me probably enough information to then give the, the ECCT folks an idea of how much money they can requisition uh, for their grant needs. That, that is very helpful, thank you. Any Wait, did questions? they get a RARPA grant? No, no. they are, um, their grant was in excess of four hundred thousand dollars, and if the town, if the town expenses grant monies of seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars or more, it trigger, triggers what is called, and it's a term of art, a single audit, which is entire. You you you've had that conversation, and it's very expensive and very time consuming. And we're really working hard not to hit that threshold. I have an unrelated question that is sort of peanuts and dollar amount, but at town meeting, we appropriated 
four thousand dollars, I think, for the railing at the Curtis Pond swim area. And I know that to be funneled through the Curtis Pond Association to oversee that project. And I know that that project is going forward. Uh, we've talked to multiple contractors. We've got a couple of bids. I think it's. I'm, I'm not directly involved, but um, I'm following the progress, and I think that project will happen in the next month or so. And so I was curious where in here that $4,000 is and what the process is for releasing it. If it was, if it, I don't, I don't have the town report with me, but... It won't be in the It won't be in there. It was done from the no. floor. So, but it was for F. It's, it was for FY twenty four. Oh, you're right. So it would be available, and it 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 would become part of that budget. It would be called it, it very ineloquently uh, a transfer out to the CPA of four thousand dollars, and that can happen after. After July one, anytime after July one. Okay. And and it was that four thousand dollars was added to the not for profit so uh, social agency, service agency yeah. budget line mm -hmm. item. Yeah. So what when you get your first um, budget to actual report for July, you will see various added yeah. items, and that would be one of them. In that in that section, and, and theoretically, if it came together, CPA could have the work done and be in June yeah. and be reimbursed. Absolutely, in July. Okay. absolutely. Great. That was voted on. Yeah. Great. Under the totality of the circumstances, that you, we we wanted in FY twenty four. Totally. Any other questions? The, 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 and you get the, I think you're getting a feel yeah. for how these numbers work. Yes? I, 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 I do. I'm just curious, like, process-wise, the fact that you discovered that the bond uh, bills had not been, you know, sent to us, is that something that, if like, were it not for you being here in your role of interim town treasurer, like, would Nemrick not have found that? Like, would we have been completely high and dry? I can't really answer that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's possible. I mean, uh, I, I just went through your budget and expenses and tried to make sense of what was happening. So, for instance, uh, the insurance budget lines are going to look entirely re reworked in May, and highway as well. I, I'm redoing those budget lines as well to reflect grant expenses that were tucked into uh, general budget expenses. Um, for instance, I mean, the consultant did the best they could without and really any historical scaffolding on how to post uh, various expenses. Um, so my, yes, yeah, so that was part of my job is to, to look at that. Okay. I, 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 she did a very good job, but, but I recalculated all of the insurance expenses to the great benefit of the general fund balance sheet. <laughs> And, and other things as well, by the way. So we're getting there. Yeah. I think it, we're as close to accurate where, where you're going to be at the end of the year as possible. Uh, delinquent taxes are very interesting. I have a couple of the usual characters on that list uh, who always pay in full, but are, are late paying in full this time. So we're going to see. Maybe they're away. I don't know. Um, yeah, so we're going to see. Okay. Um, a question about, I guess, <clears throat> at what point, like, so I know in the, um, what is it, uh, I guess this is the assets list, um, the fund balance list on the last page. Um, 
some of those are uh, the, those are all accounts or funds that have very specific usages. Um, uh, and I, am, I guess I'm curious about the technology fund due to from of twenty thousand nine hundred dollars. And on the budget page, there's a, there's a technology reserve appropriation of eight thousand dollars. So I'm I'm assuming that that fund is being funded by that. Eight thousand dollars, you know, a year. That budget item, basically. Um, I'm just not quite clear on what that technology fund is for. I think we've talked about it before. It's kind of like replacing equipment as needed, so that we're building up kind of a reserve fund for for those future expenditures. And I guess at what point do or what process is there for applying those funds to? Specific technology investments. Uh, RV Tech uh, got together with one of the members of the prior select board, Cliff Emmons, and they kind of shot a, a projection for need, for equipment needs. And because, um, and I'm not a software person, uh, I I'll give you my best language to describe it. But mm -hmm. Microsoft stop support of certain yeah. software at a certain period of time. And that um, seems to trigger the need for either different equipment or different licensure. Our laptops, uh, I think we have seven or eight town laptops, which ultimately are going to need to be replaced. And they are not the big ticket item. I mean, getting them in service is more the expense than uh, getting actually buying that piece of hardware. They're not. They are not top of the line. They they are functional tools mm -hmm. without a whole lot of bells and whistles. The big ticket item is the server, and the server is under warranty for five years. We do have a redundant server here. And most, and that was over twenty thousand dollars to get that piece up and rolling. RB Tech does not uh, finance those uh, expenditures, and so when they shot that projection, they figured we needed eight thousand dollars a year to avoid having to take a loan in the future to replace that server. Um, it is a good idea to not go to that fund. Mm -hmm. That fund was established for uh, basically for hardware and hardware onlining replacement more for that server and now we have two that we have to uh, maintain and replace when they are out of warranty and evidently that's it. I, I, as I said, I'm, this is, uh, I'm not entirely comfortable with hardware and the technical aspects of hardware and software, but evidently, what, what at the end of that warranty, they need to. It is best practice to have it be replaced. So we wanted to be in the position to be able to do that. Um, the board can take a look at any article that creates a reserve and determine whether, what the actual intent, what did the article say that that particular reserve fund was for. And if the board feels that an upcoming uh, use or proposed use of that reserve falls within the wording of that article, it is within your bailiwick to use that reserve fund as you see the need and as you see fit. So what I would say is it's a very recent article and I'm sure the select board uh, administrator will be able to dig that up for you quite quickly. It, pro it happened maybe three years ago. Oh, you? Yes. I, I went through the town reports back to back to the mid-80s, writing down all the articles so that we, if we need to know like what happened. When did we start the technology fund? I can pull up the year fairly quickly. If you can pull the... Um, the the um, minutes of that meeting following that article and ship that to the board. I, I know you're looking at some some 
technology upgrades. Uh, why doesn't then the board could take a look at that and have that discussion and see if what we're talking about or what you're talking about, if, if you feel comfortable in, in utilizing that reserve fund for that purpose. Mm. And that, uh, I don't remember the exact language, but you'll have it and, and uh, you can take a look at that. The worst case scenario, what is the worst case scenario? You have to take a small $20,000 loan to replace your server if you have seen uh, the need to use that reserve fund for other legal purposes. Mm -hmm. So you are bound by the legality of that particular article. But, uh, you know, take a look at it and see yeah. what it says. Um, you could probably ask Harvey Tech for the schedule that he, that Holland or Reuben, probably Reuben, did with Cliff Emmons, or Tegan may actually have it. I think I probably have it on file. If I don't, I'm happy to be the one to ask them, but I bet it's in our giant. Yeah, I bet, I bet Tegan has it either in ClarkShare or somewhere within the town clerk's email system. I already you like look it up. Her pull that up for you. Okay. So it's in the nature of a capital, uh, if, of a capital replacement plan, and that's that's what it was designed to do. Yeah, thank you. Okay, great. I think I'm happy to come in anytime the board needs me. I really wanted to be sure that when you look at these reports, you had a certain amount of comfort level. Uh, if you would like me to come in again and go through the next one with you, that's great. I think it would be super if we would go over your year end. That would be June, and probably that would be available to us. Um, probably, uh, I don't know what date. Do, do we, does anybody know offhand what the date is of the first select board meeting in June? Is it June 12th? It is. Yes. We I may have it may we may be close. The year end may be close by June twelfth. So July. the year end. I mean, July. Excuse me. Yes, July. July. Oh. No, no. No, it would be June. I, it is June. It's we want to be as close to the end of the year as possible. I think you'd be really interested in having that information. Uh, I, I should have it done by then. You so June twelfth for the last June eighteenth or twenty eighth. We're sorry, twenty six. Twenty six. Twenty six. It's safer to put it on the twenty sixth. And I want to remind you, I just got a um, a ding from the bank, and if I might be so bold, the bank would really like to uh, do the closing for the fire truck loan on June twelfth, and it's just waiting to hear from whoever the designated board member is, that they can do that on June 12th. Didn't we already approve them? And no, she, this is the closing. This is the closing. Is so it's on your email, we got it this afternoon. Yeah, I saw that, but I didn't have time to study it. What is it you need from us then? It needs to be on your agenda. To, to sign all the closing documents. To sign all the documents. documents. I see. That, that needs to be And they want to do that on June 12th. And they, they would like to come on June 12th, and then the money uh, would be available in the account in, in a couple of days. By the end of that week, we'd have an electronic drop. So they want to come to the meeting? They're going to have the documents, I'm going to guess, the documents are going to be sent to us digitally to be printed off and signed. I may have... Typically, the treasurer signs one or two of those documents, so I would come in and uh, not on June 12th, but I'd come in that week and get them done. Okay, but they're not coming to our meeting. We no. just need to sign the document. Right. Okay. And oftentimes, when I'm headed into town, I just say things to her. She lives in Berlin, and we can get them right to the bank. Right, yeah, right around the corner from the bank. Okay. So we just, I, knew, I figured you picked that up, but I just want to be sure that the board knew that was coming. And what we'll do with that, uh, by the way, that truck is scheduled to uh, be delivered November, December in a few months. So we will, uh, 
depending on what the board wants to do. We have two choices. That money can just go and the reserve fund that's already in existence for uh, EMFD equipment, or you can pay it over to the East Montpelier Fire Department and it goes in their reserve account. Um, best practice is probably to pay it at the time we receive um, notification that the truck is either on its way because they may need to hand a check out or is delivered and the invoice is there. That would be your best practice, but it's up to the board how you want to handle that. Is that best practice because we can collect interest on it in the meanwhile? Oh, it's best practice because you don't want to pay anything that isn't due for something that isn't there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the interest on that money is at two and a half percent is almost not even worth talking about. So do we need to actually have a vote on that? Or uh, no, just you would direct, I, direct, I think you would direct me to, uh, I don't think you need a motion on that. Okay. Just to have that conversation and, you know, the fire company would love to have that money, I'm sure, just sitting there, earning their 3%, I mean, their $4 or 40 cents, whatever it is. Um, but again, if the truck doesn't come, if there is a delay, I mean, there's a delay in all this equipment everywhere, um, then you don't have control of what your portion of that money is. It's, I don't know. I'm very conservative when it comes to that. I have every faith in, uh, in the East Montpelier Fire Department, but you, you folks will have right. that final decision. You yeah. can figure it out. Anything else? Just take a breath. <laughs> when do we start? When does the budgeting season start? But thank you very much. Sandra, as you've been kind of combing through the books and, and updating the various line items and making sure that they're appropriately booked. Like, yeah. Have you been, I guess how, how detailed can we get on any number, on any one of these particular budget items? Very detailed. If you send me an email and say, what is in this line, I can send you five years worth of what has been in that line. I can send you what has come out of that line uh, in this fiscal year, last fiscal year, this month, any time frame. Okay. That we've had Nimrick on board since July 1, 2018, so I can go back that far. But it is honestly a push of the button. It is no problem. I'll create a PDF and send it to you as an attachment. Thank you. Whatever uh, question you have of any detail of that budget. Yeah, I think, what's that? No, well, I think, you know, as we've been talking about the deficit that we're going to hit toward the end of this year, part of that are things that were out of our control. Some were likely things that were just probably not accurately budgeted for in that particular fiscal year. And, you know, if we're working on budgeting, it'd be nice to try to identify what is an actual realistic budget for various line items um, and what, what's anticipated as recurring costs and what... Your, your professional fees and legal fees really tip for sure. your balance and for whatever reason the need of, of hiring a consultant in the treasurer's position also had a large effect. Yeah. Um, that consultant did a good job, but you know, as she said, many as she has told you, she was not invited to select board meetings. She was not asked for updates or observations. Uh, she really was basically asked to, as she likes to say, keep the lights on. So um, there was, other than the office staff, which supported her, and they worked together. The select, she was really divorced from the select board, and when that happens, you know, you just do the best you can. 
and uh, I think things are in uh, really fairly good order. But she may not, they are, they're in fairly good order. It's, it has nothing to do with um, her work that you are in a deficit. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. No, understood, thank you. Okay, thanks very thank much for being here. Well, thank mm -hmm. you so much for having me. Good work and good information. Um, okay, select for reports. Rose, Cordy, Coppola, I think. Wow. Great. I think we've touched on a lot of road um, updates already. Um, I might just give a um, quick synopsis of a couple of things that have come my way that at some point may come before this board. Uh, including a number of requests for um, increased or altered uh, road signs in the Maple Corner area. Um, it's been pointed out to me that there's not much in the way of warning signs uh, by the swim area, and that's a pretty dangerous um, blind hill with huge amounts of pedestrian uh, activity at the crest of the hill. Um, and so some folks who live in the neighborhood have suggested that we could do a better job of um, putting up, you know, reduced speed, heavy pedestrian traffic, warning type signs um, leading into that area. And then there's another, for many years, parking in Maple Corner has been an issue and the community center has historically put um, orange cones out on the, the span of West County Road from the Maple Corner store parking lot to the Worcester Road on the store side of the road so that at events, cars don't park on that section and they only park on one side. And so the, the boards of the community center and the board of the store and the property owner along that stretch have requested no parking this side of the street signs so that instead of having to cone off for every event and every whammy bar night, there's just permanently no parking in that section uh, would make it feel a lot safer for emergency vehicles and traffic getting through town so there's not cars on either side. So I guess my question on that is, is that something the select board decides or is that something we can work with the road crew and get signs up? I don't think those types of signs in either scenario are outlined in the um, traffic ordinance. Mm. So I, I just don't know the process on that. Go with those that MUTD -E that book. 91 uniform traffic control devices. They're in there. So that's something that could be ordered and put up pretty easily, I presume. Yeah. When? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody have? I feel like doing no parking on a particular side of the road is kind of a big thing to do without, like, I mean, you know, we we're hearing. having this whole thing about changing speed limits without warning, and um, <clears throat> I don't know, it just, it does seem like kind of a big thing to just right. decide without right. letting people know in advance, and um, yeah, and I, I, it would just seem to me like there probably is some sort of guidance, best practice kind of thing for... Uh, getting that done. I, would, I would agree with that. I mean, I think that no, no, no parking signage and designation on one side of the street or another is going to affect traffic patterns and right. people's habitual traffic patterns. And so I think that there just probably should be a little bit of a, more of a process for evaluating what that decision should look like before just kind of tasking, tasking folks with making that designation and, and hanging signs. Um, I'd have concerns, I guess, about whether or not we could even really 
even accommodate that, whether or not designating a side of the street would even make that much of a difference. <laughs> um, but it should be looked at. I'd be surprised if they don't have some sort of traffic study that they do as part of that for central and rural development. Right. And I guess for the other thing that um, I wonder if that's even an official sign or if it just so just one of those signs you order, you know, pedestrian crossing or right. just something like that. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. If that, all this stuff about them having to be a certain specification, you would just wonder. But if it's like, not a an enforceable thing, right. then it's, it's just a people warning. People listen to it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've driven through them when there's yeah. Activities in the evening is pretty scary, but which one by the swimming no, area? The, well, the swimming area can get pretty sketchy, yeah. um, but the, you know when there's activities at the store because they, they come right out into the road, and you know it's they're just really kind of piled in there, and it's very hard to negotiate sometimes. Mm -hmm. But I think inviting public, yeah. So maybe that goes on a a former agenda, future agenda, <laughs> future agenda. All right, parking signs on the west side of the street in Maple Corner Community yeah. Center. No parking signs. Right. And what is it exactly that you want to put up at the swim area? Um. I think that the speed limit already is 25 to Robinson Hill Road, although I've had a few folks comment to me that there aren't, there's a long gap between where the signs are, so there was a request for an additional speed limit sign and also just pedestrian warning signs oh, on no. either side of the swim area. Okay. Um, How many signs? I, I would presume it would be one warning sign in each, in direction. each direction. Um, but, but I feel like that could be potentially packaged with the Maple Corner parking sign question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Would you repeat about the speed limit between the village and Robinson Hill? That's not very far. You, you want to put up another... 25 mile per hour speed limit sign? I, I, I have to look at that more. A few people have told me that they didn't know what the speed limit was um, and that there's a sign right leaving the village, but then there's not another speed limit sign until it goes up to 35 three quarters of a mile later. Um, and so it was wondering if we could put another a reminder speed limit sign closer to the, like between the swim area and the fishing access. Uh -huh. okay. But that may be part of a, we've discussed at some point doing a speed limit sign inventory and yeah. sort of a, a bigger project to determine where our signs are up to code and where they aren't. So that may be just rolled into that project. All right, so for the next agenda, we just like the first two. Yeah. There is a mm. sign inventory for the town. Do you have it? No. Do you know where <laughs> one would find it? <laughs> <laughs> the reason, the reason I know about it is because my husband and I own the only um, lit traffic sign on the county road, uh -huh. and it's listed on the town of Callis, and you don't own it, we do. Uh -huh. <laughs> and it costs $5,000 yeah. for that one. Uh -huh. So it's on, there's a sign inventory, the town has a sign inventory. And, and John, do you know where that is? No. And a culvert inventory, and you know yes. I know there's a culvert inventory, but we've never yeah. been shown. There's a sign inventory. Yeah, and, and we're supposed to check them once a year to make sure mm -hmm. that they're not leaning over and they're probably pruning right. that sort yeah. of thing. Seems like something Toby home. would have. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, I can ask Toby and Tegan to both do a search on that if you'd like. Sure, great. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah.
Okay. Um, can we move on there for uh, a Yeah. No, in fact, real quick, a couple of housekeeping things with the roads. We have about five tons of tires at the town garage that need to go away. Um, it's a violation. It, they've been collected over years um, from previous cleanup efforts. Um, quite possibly just for ones that have gone bad on, on the vehicles at the garage, but um, but $260 a ton, that's the best price. Um, they called around from Casella's, they're looking at like $1,200. Um, but it's a fire hazard, they're breeding mosquitoes. It's, you know, if they caught on fire, it'd be like bigger toxic problem than a lot of other things. So I didn't know if that's something we have to do votes on or if that's something from the highway budget that they could just get it done to get it out. It seems to me that should, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. Sure. because I mean, moving yeah. forward, they have grants in the spring and they have like a green yeah. grant, but the uh, Central Vermont Waste it, Management has a grant in the March that we could apply for, for tires specifically or something. How many um, truck? It's a lot of tires. It, so we're it, talking about 500, about it, 500 tires. It appears to me that we get a Green Up Day grant every year, which pays for the getting rid of the Green Up Day trash. Mm -hmm. And my understanding had always been that it was the tires too. And it used to be that Alfie had somebody come pick them up that I thought was through Green Up Day and at no expense to the town. Mm -hmm. But it appears that that hasn't happened for several years. So it's a, it's a collection of Green Up Day tires um, that have not been dealt with for several years. So is there money in been, the Green Up Day? Right. Um, so I have been um, trying all week to connect with the state Green Up Day coordinator um, and we haven't, I haven't succeeded in having a conversation, but I expect to this week, um, uh, maybe tomorrow, and then I'll know if there's well funding for it. So I guess to the, to Sandra's point that there's a sur right. not a surplus, but- Not a surplus. Definitively <laughs> not a surplus of okay. money, but there, there are, there is room in the roads yeah. crew, or in the in the road budget, um, to hopefully temporarily, but in the meantime, take care of the issue, pay for a service. It wasn't originally the line item. We could approve the the expense of removing them if we, in fact, do get some reconciliation through the Green Up uh, grant, then we can do that. But it seems like it's something that just needs to yeah, be dealt yeah. with sooner than later. Make sure yeah. there's photos taken when I help. Yeah. Um, so, tell them we're not going to pay their hundred dollar donation. Play hardball, huh? <laughs> the so. other piece, um, there is a trailer. I brought the trailer that was cut in half so Tegan could take it offline. But there's another smaller one um, that has not been in use for a number of years. The tires are probably no longer okay, but um, I understand the road crew's been in agreement. They want to get rid of it. It's just taking up space. It's not anything that they have a use for. And Ed has expressed an interest in purchasing it. So I don't know. And it's who has or someone? No, has. this is at the town garage. So it's a small trailer that has not been in use for a very long time. And they've talked about getting rid of it for a long time. And it's still sitting there. Who <laughs> wants to purchase it? Ed Rowell. Yeah. Does it have any value? I mean, because we can post it for sale on VLCT for free. We can post it several, try, we can try to sell it or give it away if it has any value. Or is it just trash? No, it's not, it, it's, you know, I think it needs tires, you know, but it's, it's not falling apart or rusted in half. It has some value to it. Can we for him for free? Ed well, Rowell. Ed Rowell wants it, so he would like to purchase it. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed that part. Okay, okay. so he has, yeah, asked if we were to get rid of it, if he could have first. Did, I guess. So I don't know what that looks like or how people feel about it, but. If we were just trying to sell it, what would we sell it for? Does anybody have a clue? I don't know anything about the trailer. 
Mm. How big of a trailer? Yeah, it's like a trailer to uh, move like a riding lawnmower kind of thing. Single axle. I can't hear you. It's a single axle trailer. Six by eight or something. Uh, it might be six by ten. It's, it's, it's aluminum. It's, um, Is it in decent shape other than the tires? Yeah. So are we talking a thousand dollars, a hundred dollars? I have no clue. I think Ed was thinking maybe what seven or something, seven hundred. I see. It's yeah, but I don't know how to price it, but it's not going to be worth much. So it's, it's not in bad shape, but it's just it's been there forever. It was a show for something else, and we don't ever use it anymore. And you have plenty of other trailers. We just lost one. We got one cut up. Uh, we have a trailer for the hydro seater. We have a trailer for the excavator. And I don't think we really have anything we carry on that. Yeah, I mean, it's too light duty for anything that you guys would need to move, right. so I don't really see There's it. No brakes on. It doesn't have yeah, electric right. brakes, right? <clears throat> would anybody take objection to departing to head? From our department? Yeah. No, it's something he's been talking about for years. Mm -hmm. Alfie was supposed to approach the select board a number of years ago, too, and never did. I'm just trying, just thinking out loud, is, is it only fair if we offer it for sale for $700 and allow Ed to make the offer? Is there a problem, is there a problem with selling it directly to a town employee without at least offering it for right. sale? And I don't know the answer to this, I'm just thinking, Rose, I can tell that? you the select board has dealt with issues like this in the past, and it, it would be my recommendation to more broadly advertise it or um, because it just somebody it, you know it, it sounds good and I would do it in a heartbeat but it's just is there a look of impropriety no, like, he's yeah. a town employee why did he get first dibs you know or something like that and we've dealt with things like this in the past yeah so you heard my concern yeah you know. all right then we can do that and yeah, why don't you try to figure out what's a fair price <clears throat> and put it on front porch forum and see if anybody nimbles. And if they don't, sell it to Ed. All right. And if they do, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then super quick, so now we're like super over. Um, been knocking out the ancient curb cuts. Um, the what? The curb cuts from like 21 and 20. Descriptions has never got signed off on. You have to go and be like, there is a driveway and it's <laughs> as described and signed off. So I've been plugging a lot of that and I did download the app for the roads and I have the Better Roads manual and Toby said he would take me out and I knew what a berm is and I knew what a, you know, so we're trying to figure out a way to do it logistically with him having a part-time you know, he's our grant guy, so we don't want him to lose precious grant time wandering our back roads. Um, well, I'm sorry, are you going to do the inventory? Is that what you're saying? He's going to take me out and train me on it, yes. So because then would you have to be paid as a part-time employee? No. You're doing it on a volunteer basis? I do a lot of things. We meet every week at 6 a.m. on a volunteer basis. I mean, as we do things on a volunteer basis, so... Am I going to do the whole thing now? He's supposed to be coming up with a paper form because the guys are reticent about the computer app. Um, but a paper form that has, you know, we're over on Tucker Road grading, we're taking looks see culverts, you know, the crown needs to be done, the ditching needs to be reditched, I don't know the technical term. Um, and then that can be transferred into the app. So we're trying to come up with ways that collectively it can get done. In theory, a road commissioner or whoever becomes a supervisor, it should be like a yearly thing that they're doing a, a walk through, a very conscientious, like looking at all of the things, you know, but as Toby said, it's only those segments, which are really kind of, they're all over the place. On the roads. I wouldn't even think would have one. So they're everywhere, but, and it's pretty easy to, to update it, but I don't know what else. We're trying lots of things, but 
The curb cut, is that, uh, you said curb cuts that weren't signed off on, are those like applications that hadn't been uh, approved? Yeah, so these were ones that were approved and were, let me try to think of an example. So, so they were all approved. So like the Memorial <laughs> Hall. was done, yeah. but Not there were several yeah. years. Like your yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Inspect it and say, okay, okay. great, yeah. sign off on yeah. it, done, yeah. so that it could be they get That's recorded in yeah. yeah. the town office. Yeah. So they haven't been recorded for several years. Yeah. So we're playing catch up just to have the road commissioners go inspect the site, sign off, say, yeah, they met all the conditions, it's fine. Yeah. So Tegan can then report it in the land records. Yeah. And so like some Thank people you. like, you know, either the thing fell through or they haven't done it yet, or some people they're, you know, still their yard is still just totally tore up. So I'm like, I'm assuming that's not a driveway. So, you know, they're in, <laughs> they're in different states, but the ones that are easy and clearly done, it's like, okay, well. There was like a plastic tub of files from several years that we're playing catch up on. Yeah, so it's, it's not like, I, I don't need a degree in engineering or something. <laughs> so no, very I'm, basic, I'm like, just and the ones that I'm kind of like, mm, then I do ask for, but. Okay, I'll stop. Um, I'll just mention Toby's on salary, um, not on an hourly basis. Oh, yes, so okay. Don't, don't if he's willing to do it, go ahead. Yeah, no, he said he would take me out and said he has a specific. And, yeah. Okay. Um, so, Curtis Pond Dam, I think we can be super quick about this. Uh, there was a meeting of the Curtis Pond Association. They kind of went over what they need to do through September 11th to get everything ready to go out to bid. There was a meeting with the engineer um, on Friday. Did that happen Friday morning? Um, with Jeff Tucker? It's tomorrow morning. Oh, it's tomorrow morning. It's tomorrow morning. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I can go to that. Uh, no. no. It, it had been the, the last I saw it was Friday morning. And I couldn't go to that. But anyway, so yeah. yeah so so I, 9 30 tomorrow morning in Randall. Okay, would you mind going? Oh, in Randall? Yeah. And no Zoom option? Um, I'll find out. Yeah, just forward me the email. That yeah. I don't know that I need to be there. But anyway, so they, so the Curtis Palm Association is, um, I don't know. I mean, they're they're continuing to do their work and make contingency plans and parallel tracks and um, and uh, I think they are you know poking the people they need to poke to try to get the permits and um, stuff like that. You have anything to add? Not really. We're no. plugging away. We're you know, keeping the pressure on the state folks. Things are going ahead, I think, as planned in mm -hmm. the timeline that we discussed at previous meetings. Yeah. Okay, that's that one. Uh, shared documents and new email accounts. Uh, so the big outstanding thing, I think, at this point is the shared documents. Um, so Jamie and I did a little initial work on there, um, and I've been doing a little more research on, on how to kind of get the shared documents platform set up before we kind of transfer everything over. I've been incrementally trying to recreate what we had on the Google Drive and then move things over. I think it's going to be easier for everybody if everything is in there first before we, we kind of start utilizing that more fully. Otherwise, it's going to get disorganized pretty quickly. Can you go back to the no, uh, well, Mostly just current stuff, um, and then several years worth of stuff. Once we have a repository for it, we can move it over there. Um, uh, but what I've learned is that it's not as easy to parse out permissions for who can access what folders within a particular group. Um, and so right now, there's there's a there's a town of Callis group. Anybody who has an email address can basically share records that are accessible from every day by anybody who has an existing an account. Um, and then there's a, I created a separate group with Holland that is just the select board um, and the select board administrator who would have access to that. Um, but for instance, if we wanted a 
sub group, like a sub folder in there for the collective bargaining folder that we would want to keep separately that, that we can't as easily do that without creating yet another group and I'd like to try to figure out how, how to do that because there are likely certain folders like uh, financial folders where we might want to allow the treasurer to have access directly to that folder within the uh, within the select board group um, and it's that was a lot easier in Google mm. and it's not as easy in the Microsoft platform um, without support from RV. So I'm working on that. I don't have a particular timeline. Does anybody have a particular issue with their emails that they're having a hard time? Well, I know I'm going to want to change my password at some point just to have a rememberable yes. password. Um, and, uh, and I haven't tried doing anything with it on my phone, and I'm not sure if I can. Um, so. so, with our licenses, we we have the ability to download the apps using using our uh, calisvermont.gov um, accounts. So I downloaded the Outlook app and put it on my phone. Do you already use the Outlook app on your phone for? Yeah, but it's got my work in it. So it's okay. We we don't have to. Um, we, we can talk about that. Uh, separately if you want. Uh, I put it on there and I registered my account with my phone and it was perfectly happy to allow me to sign in. Uh, the passwords, uh, we should individually have the ability to change our passwords if you want to through the web browser. So if you go to office.com and sign in with your um, uh, Callus account, uh, there are settings in there that you, you can change your password. To Tegan's point, the authentication is something if, if we likely all needed to go through the authentication, the two-step authentication process mm -hmm. initially. Um, it's going to be a, right now it's not required. It, it's only required for that initial sign-in. Um, if you continue to use just the browser access, at some point, it will be mandatory that you use two-factor authentication all the time. It's not something that we'll be able to turn off. Mm -hmm. um, if you have the desktop applications, if we can figure out the desktop applications for everybody, um, that's a way around that. Um, it's a little bit easier because it's a little more secure. Okay, thank you. Uh, collective bargaining report. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think we both want to ask question. Okay. Well, um, at the last meeting, we talked about how to deal with um, the select board yes. email. Yep. So I talked to Hawk a little bit about that. Um, I, I think we were kind of going down the road of overcomplicating things. Right now, it's set up as a distribution list. Um, that has been serving out to everybody. It seems like everybody's been doing a pretty good job of just not replying all to that distribution list, so that's good. Um, I, I don't see a way to navigate away from that by creating a dedicated inbox with, without assigning that to somebody and then basically just transferring the burden of work to somebody. Uh, which would be Barbara. <laughs> so I, I just want to be sensitive to that. So I think until we have an I issue with the distribution list and how it's being used, I think it's I think it's probably best to keep it a distribution list and not a, a dedicated inbox that is either shared or administered by a single person. So uh, as of now, there's no select board contact information posted on the website. Um, not even the select board no, distribution? there's nothing. It, it, right? It has it my has your, If you want to contact the select board, it says contact select board admin. Right. That. So there's something, there is. but it's me. So I've been sending stuff to you guys that comes to me. Right. Would it make sense to change that to the distribution list so it comes to all of us? I. 
I think that that would be totally appropriate. Um, I think we're going to have to figure out how to kind of govern follow up. Um, uh, but that distribution list goes to Barbara as well. So if somebody is asking about a particular thing that needs to be added to an agenda, you know, I think between just making some very broad assumptions that if, if Barbara were keeping a list of agenda items or future agenda items and working with, uh, with Anne uh, as chair to draft those, those agenda or keeping track of those agenda items, um, I think that that would be a pretty workable system. But, and if anybody sees something coming in that they would like to jump on specifically, I think that, that, that they should work with Barbara or Anne to communicate that they'd be jumping on a particular issue or correspondence directly, if that makes sense. So it seems to me the way it's been working has been fine when we email the select board address, six people get it. If you hit reply, the reply only goes to the person who sent it. So Correct. there's no conflict of interest there. My bigger question is, the, where we got stalled two weeks ago was, are we going to list individual email addresses on the website? Some wanted it, others didn't. Um, and so that, that's the first question is, what are we going to publish your five individual email addresses or publish just select board at? That remains a very good question. I've become less opinionated about it since our last conversation. So if there, are, I will defer to people with stronger opinions. Um, well, my consensus is that three of you don't particularly want your email addresses listed and two of you do. <laughs> I'm wondering, I think we talked about this, was on the select board page, just have the select board distribution box listed and on the road commissioner, and on the highway page, have the two road commissioners, if you guys are still wanting your email addresses there. Is that a happy compromise? I think, I think that that makes a lot of sense, and I'm kind of, I'm deferring to a position of let's solve the problem when it becomes a problem, instead of just, just, just sending stuff out. I'm just uh, listening to, who wants what? I'm trying to figure out how to keep all five of everybody happy. <laughs> and then my next question is regarding CBRPC. Previously, you had did, didn't want me to give them CBRPC, and they don't share it anywhere. It's just for their own internal email list serve. You didn't want me to give them your individual email addresses. So is the way I'm just forwarding, uh, I don't mean CBRPC, I mean VLCT. VLCT emails to you guys. Just keep doing it that way. I, well, I think we should it. sign them up for the yeah. distribution we, list, and yeah, then their um, stuff will come to us all directly. Try that. Yeah. They won't accept it. You have uh -huh. to have a unique. I actually try to give them one, two, three, four, five names with a callus with select board at callusvermont.gov email, and they won't accept it. They has to have a unique email address for each one of you. But I, but I think the hesitation initially was signing up with personal email addresses. So yeah, I don't think yeah, yeah, it's everyone's fine, fine being signed up with Okay, their so it's okay with you guys if I give e, C, uh, BLCT each of your five individual CalisVermont.gov email addresses. Yeah, I'm already yes. like signed up. Perfect, thank you. That's what I needed to know. <laughs> thank you. Uh -huh. Here's a stupid question. Am I supposed to be checking the Calis select board, the select board email? No, they come directly to you. <laughs> this is why it gets confusing. That's what a decision is. It can yes. get, get, get okay. confusing. It's coming directly to you, and you, and you, and you, and you, and me. But it looks like it just came, when I see it, it looks like it just came to me. When you see it, it looks like it just came to you. Right. When he sees it, it looks like it just came to him. Right. And that's why I didn't know I was getting them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you're getting them in your inbox. It's just that you don't know that five other people got it and let... Well, if, you did, if you did reply all, it would show you that yeah, it was. It shows that there's other people on it. Yeah, we might. Okay. It, I, you know what? I actually haven't tried hitting reply all. I didn't know that. Okay. Um, is that true, George? So I Scott, guess. Uh, I, I guess it is. You said it is. Yeah. I mean, I'm accustomed with a, a distribution. 
email that it, it does behave like a group email, as in like you hit reply all, it replies replies all, you hit reply, it's to the person who sent the email. But I think in this case, when you hit reply all, it goes to the person who sent it and back to the distribution list and yeah. not to everybody on it individually. Mm, right? It's the same thing though. It's yeah, ostensibly the, the same thing, yes. But mm, yes. It's the same thing. Yeah. Or so, uh, sorry. Oh, well so there's a yeah, there's a it will it, it's the, it is the same thing. There's also a button on there, so it, it, it has a plus sign in front of it and if you click on it it will it will show all the members of that list. <clears throat> but does uh, it actually don't... respond to them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you, you, with the distribution list, you want to make sure that you're definitely not replying all. Um, you just want to reply to the original sender. So it'll look like it. But if you look at the to line, it will say this was sent to the select board distribution list as opposed to it just looking like it was sent to you directly. Oh, okay. All right, are we ready to move on? Don't <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, done. Yeah. No, it's okay. Um, <laughs> I, I, I guess I wasn't sure if we made a <laughs> decision to go with Barbara's suggestion of listing Ann and I on the road, but not listing people individually on the select board page, or if people have changed feelings on that. I'd like to start there with okay. the select board distribution list, and as as our workload kind of dissipates and our comfort level with the uh, email system, you know, improves, I think we can kind of revisit it, or, or certainly if there is an outcry from the public to say that we don't know how to get in touch with various people, um, then then we can revisit it. But okay. I also have a, um, so it's still not clear to Tegan and me who is use, who is set up to use their new accounts. So for example, and, and, and on the road commissioner distribution group, I've emailed it a couple of times and I've asked, who's getting this? Is it the two road commissioners? Is it the road that. crew? Is it Toby? Who's getting this? And nobody ever replies. So I'm thinking, they're not, nobody's getting this. Yeah. So, that would um, be right. I had an email exchange with Holland on that question yesterday, okay. and I got confirmation this morning that uh, it was set up to just send to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't gotten any. But, but, <laughs> but, That's because you're the only one you can help right. <laughs> Um, but that it has, he said he's since updated it um, to send to both Ann and I. Okay. So I just sent a test and haven't yet received, and... Okay, so yeah. the next time I email that distribution group, it'll be just the two road commissioners, nobody on the road crew, and not Toby, just the two of you. Yes. Okay. And I just sent a test from my personal email okay. and I received it on my select board. So. But like the zoning administrator and the listers and all these others, that I keep emailing them, right. nobody's responding back and I don't know if it's because they're ignoring well, me or they're not getting them. So Holland said that he had set, so we uh, initially made the decision to set up the zoning administrator uh, to have a dedicated account and each of the three listers to have a dedicated account with the, making the assumption that they would likely need to independently have communication with maybe property owners or et cetera, et cetera. So maybe they should have their own dedicated accounts. Plus, a, tried, plus a lister that listers at, I, which, which is a distribution Just group. a distribution list, yeah, right. Okay. Um, and uh, I believe he tried to introduce John to that and his dedicated listers account and um, not a lot of time was spent. It was it was not a message that was fully received. So okay. I don't know that 
We probably have to task the individuals, the listeners, and John to spend some time to get oriented with okay. it and to circle back. They were busy with another meeting or specific task, and okay. so they didn't kind of like, I don't think, take it to heart thinking that it was a formal activation of the account. So those accounts are active. Whether or not they are actually signing into them and using them is kind of in their core. They're extremely court. busy right now. Yeah. Maybe not right. interested in learning something new. That's very, yeah. that's very likely. Okay. Um, I guess the zoning administrator one is the one that probably should get the most attention to make sure that if people are using it, that at least it's getting so checked. So the rest on I, I can also say that the webmaster one, I received the password, but I haven't yet been able to figure out how to toggle on the same device between two accounts, but I think I'll get there in the next day or two. Okay, so you, so have, have you been checking? I, I have not. None. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. that one has never been checked by anybody. Okay. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, well, wait. We have to play some catch up. Then. Yeah, I was thinking. I, was, I, 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 I honestly was confident that you were set up. Okay, gotcha. No, Sorry. only on my personal side. Gotcha. Platform. On the G, you're still on the G. I'm still platform, on the G. But not on the Callus. Right. Okay. Okay, thanks. I'm hopeful I'll get in tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Um, are we ready to move on? Collective bargaining report. Uh, we had our second negotiation meeting. It's actually like just kind of one and a half, I guess. There was a pretty significant kind of clerical error that has kind of put us a little off track on our dialogue with the union, um, but we have a plan for moving forward and are feeling fine about it. Okay. Is there, a, I forget, is there a deadline or something? Not exactly. There are rules that govern how long this process uh, takes and like relative to how many meetings uh, should be applied to the negotiation, but it can always be extended uh, relative to each party's agreement. So, uh, right now, we're still in the first couple of meetings uh, of working through the negotiation <coughs> process. Um, so there's there's interest on both sides to get through the process as quickly as possible, but but we just have to kind of allow time for the negotiation. There's a lot of it's a lot of stuff to work through, particularly because it's a it's a brand new contract. Yeah. So pretty much every single thing has to be discussed. Right. Okay. Um, anything to add? Can you guys? That covers it. Okay. And the status of Shed v. Callis, possible executive session to discuss next steps if remedial action is not completed by June 1. I think I could probably do this in cryptic terms so we don't have to go into executive session. Um, at the moment, it still looks like June 1st will be the end date. There has been no significant movement on the Callis property. Um, and there has been no further interaction between attorneys. So to our knowledge, everything is, is still the same. Um, the cold does require surgery, which has not happened. Um, because what requires surgery? surgery the, the male horse of the colt um, has a testicular issue of some variety and might possibly have gastric ulcers. Um, it's not a cheap surgery. Um, the individual who has been fostering the horse is interested in adopting the horse. Um, but I'm not going to use any names. And had offered in part not to charge for the last six months of boarding, which averages like four fifty a month. Um, and with this surgery, I don't know if the town would be willing, the individual is willing to pay a significant portion of it, but can the town help 
pragmatically, you know, with a portion of it so we can get the animal the medical treatment that it really needs um, and has been kind of put off because we couldn't get approval for it so that the individual would, yeah, we can talk more about it later, but that would ultimately kind of balance out to a, they would be paying towards adopting the horse through this process um, while also making concessions that the animal's probably going to have some ongoing medical needs that need treating and are going to be expensive that they're going to have to take on. So, and then the other three, we have possibilities, but probably we should talk more about that on June 12th. I don't, yeah. Why June 12th? Oh, we're going to be back. So it ends on June 1st. That's our next meeting. Okay. So, I mean, there is um, the one of the mayors is more well-rounded and actually has a perspective home. Um, I'm just going to leave it at that. And then the two more curmudgeon-y mayors. Um, I had talked with the place where they're being fostered as far as, you know, do we want to invest small amount into basic handling and helping making them more amenable to people will likely increase their likelihood of a good adoption. Um, but I'm also going to reach out to my, I did a training for animal rescue emergency management thing yesterday and I'm going to reach out to those gals because they might also have some ideas for for horses that have been in not so awesome situations where they can go and live out their best curmudgeon life. I mean, it's just horses are expensive. They, you don't make money from them. They cost you money. So it's, mm -hmm. you know, but um, yeah, we want to give them the best next life possible within our power, if that is in fact what happens. So mm -hmm. I'll stop there. Okay. So, would you want to go into executive session in the next meeting to discuss this, or is that something we can then discuss openly? Um, I think, no, because you're still not going to want whereabouts of the animals to be known. I see. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so any new business to come before the board? All right. You've had enough business. <laughs> Can I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. You want to make a motion? Do we have to make a motion or is it just a motion? Oh, um, so do we need a motion to recess? You need a motion. You're, you move to continue adhering to a time and date certain for, for the purposes of continuing to um, Review the or per publication. Oh, no, no, the or right the work uh, per issue in the right of way. way. So the movement, the motion would be uh, I will move to continue the hearing to seven o'clock on um, Thursday, Thursday, May twenty-five, fifth, the twenty-fifth, for the purpose of um, hearing further on on the uh, application of our board to work in the town right away. You get that okay, Rose? Is sort of further on the application work in the town right away. Yeah. Okay. Is, is the other meeting, is it six? Yeah. Is that enough time? Do we think? We have no idea. For all we know, no one will show up. So I think you make a good point. Maybe you want to make this Three for 30 because you can always start late, but you can't start early. Is that right? Well, we how about me at five thirty? Right. That's that what I was wondering. Oh, do this at five? Do yeah. Because yeah. yeah. this will be quick. Yeah. We hope. We yeah. Hope. yeah, we hope. It wasn't quick tonight. It was to quick tonight. They seemed to have a conversation outside. Yeah. People were smiling. There wasn't any yelling. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he could only make it better. So it's. <laughs> You can only improve upon what we've done. Oh, we can pick a date. I got a bounce here. Uh, well, then, what do you think? I'm About sorry. Quarter to six? Does that work? Can yeah, that's fine. I think, I think 5.30. Good. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That'll be okay for you? Yeah. I mean, the rest yeah. of us. And it's going to be okay just for Jamie or I to have the info from John because he's on vacation. So right. it's going to be 
out of here. Okay. So, Rose, you got that in? It's uh, 7 o'clock, 5.30. Okay, on May 25th. On May 25th. For the purpose of hearing for the application of the guy's right-of-way thing. Further concerning the application for work in the highway right-of-way. Yeah, um, 5.30. Thank so you. we, my understanding is that we are not required to warn continued meetings, but probably we're allowed to. Well, I can't yeah. see why we would. Is there any reason to. not to, just as a good practice of public? Um, usually, it's anybody who was interested in this was happening and knows and heard it, and there's no need to do that. Okay. So it's just not the general practice. But it would be good to give both the crew and Larry for a call because we didn't state the time. Mm. Right. Because we were. Yeah, he's on the email. The we were just shooting the time email. while they were still here. Right. This, um, this uh, liquor permit, does that mean a document? No, we have a motion to have Tegan approve it. So right. for, you don't need to sign any. Okay. But if you have the Weiss curb cut application signed, uh, yeah, yeah, it's right here, signed by the sign. Okay. The board orders are signed. Thank you. And this doesn't have any more conditions or anything, so this is finished, correct? You no, know, I think we probably should have at least said that um, it should be signed off on by. It has um, to be. It's on the bottom. So the road commissioners yeah, will have to go over and right. sign that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we did it for Lewis Porter. Twenty twenty. Um, was that a right of what? That, that was, was a work in the right. That was work. Okay. Right. Right. All right. So we have a motion. Are we set? Did somebody set for me? Yeah. Yeah. Second. Oh, sorry. <laughs> You're in charge. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um. Further discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.